for a sec. I'll just tell you in case you accidentally go Good idea. off the reservation. Good idea, you know I do sometimes. She does. Sometimes she just goes off the reservation. <laughs> Welcome, everyone, to the military terms and jargon for civilian experts. Here we are. Let us know, team. Is the sound okay? Kaz must be backing one out. No, not so fast, Mr. Buckaroonie. Leave your fantasies <laughs> off the war table. Uh, here we go. Sad boy, how did the first one up here? We can see that Tyson Walker's here. Mr. P's here. Some bloody good uh, turnout already. We've got Lightfoot. Yep. We've got ba uh, Bailey's hat who flicked it. It caught the wind and it landed <laughs> on George Michael's bed on the last day he was alive. Yep. And then he felt complete. Yep. Carl Key was actually the first guy here. Carl's... Never far away. He's either no. on a rooftop more often than um, Lionel Richie, who's dancing on the ceiling. Um, <laughs> and if he's not there, he's on the phone and I'm chatting with him. So it's good to go. I'm always impressed by your knowledge of 80s lyrics. Well, they governed my dance moves for those yeah. that have seen them. <laughs> Same. Mm. And my moves are still relevant on a Bulgarian dance floor. Yeah, <laughs> don't let that stop you. <laughs> Diamond Bravo, Kane and Peppers, David Nelson, Nelson Bay, one of my favourite places, Hawk's Nest, the area where some of the biggest great whites exist. Carl P, he's here. Declan, sounds like a, a sexy man from the 90s. Was he? <laughs> like he should be carrying a briefcase. Declan, <laughs> it sounds like a man that can get things done. Steve, yo, Emilio. <laughs> Sean Goodrich, wish I was. Yaros, my favourite kebab. Good to have you, mate. Tomorrow's your phone call, yeah? Yeah, I've sent a couple of messages to you. I'm not sure if you've sent any back onto the bat phone so that we can have our communiques, I'd say, in France. We've got Luke. Luke! <gasps> Hope you've got the force, Luke. Uh, Cody, not Cody Bear, Cody Brown. Hmm. Never a frown with Cody Brown. We've got Mr. P. We've got Guardian27, David Nelson. How's your Ducati? I sold it for next to Nix to someone who's had two cars stolen. I don't think he ever said thank you either. Um, oh. It was a beautiful bike. It wasn't a good rider. I never trusted the front wheel. When you learn to ride bikes older, you tend to uh, probably not be as trusting on the front wheel when you go around corners where there's more often than not shitty roads, a lot of gravel, etc. Bike riders know what I'm talking about. Until the rules change that you're allowed to ride your bike defensively 10 kilometres over the speed limit of cars because your braking is so much better, I wouldn't uh, be in a hurry to get back on one. We've got hey, Sean. Jay, yeah, Jay Hayes is here too. It's nice to see him. It is good to have Jay Hayes here. Jay is all the way from West. He is, bam, not yep. cerebral palsy. He's West Side. West Side, yep, exactly. Peter Mayfield. Mayfield. Yep. Not Mayfair. Sean Goodrich. Yeah, he's, he's good here. People are here. Mm. We've got all the usual suspects. It's Friday yep. afternoon. Everyone's got the COVID hangover. All of a sudden, we're allowed to go out, and people are like, ah, I kind of got used to sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> let's um, let's yeah. just quickly say to you guys, I had so much planned to be able to deliver this tonight. And the, the actual inspiration behind this, other than looking after the little one, and I don't mean my little one, uh, looking after my daughter, puppy, etc., was seeing Ed B, okay? Ed B over in the USA, as he's now training his son in navigation, the six-figure, four-figure, eight-figure, ten-figure grid reference, uh, also using back bearings, etc. He's teaching him a lot of the skills that most young rookies have the hardest time uh -uh, putting in their brain. Okay, understanding that we don't use the uh, degree system on compasses, we compass, compass I, we use mills, 6,400 of them instead of 360, a lot more detail. Um, and that is something that a lot of people have a hard time getting their head around and go to uh, GPS, but then that takes away your ability to actually track human movement where people are likely to be as you go across country. We've got B Stubbs, Tyson Walker, Mike Tyson Walker, not runner anymore oh, as he I'm ages. Just saying he got his posting today. Where to? 
Uh, he hasn't said. AM's going. Where's he going? To put his kids to bed. I presume he by turds he means children. Oh, I put a turd to bed just before. I feel oh, great. I feel light. I know because I was on the phone to you when you were doing it, so I don't need to know again. Hey, don't judge me. Everyone does it, including the queen. <laughs> Guys and gals, okay, it's the topic of the year, so I thought I'd get on board. You can't have too much corona. As a matter of fact, I've never met a single person that's had it, yet everyone seems to be scared. Cheers, bottoms up. Mm. Lovely. Okay, guys and gals, military terms. you got to understand that when you join the military, that you are going to be introduced to a language that feels like you are drinking from a fire hose. Where are all these acronyms coming from? What is all this information? Will I ever actually get it? Will I understand enough to be able to converse with it? And the answer is yes. The learning curve will be steep at the start, but like a child learning English, Japanese, hiragana, Spanish, Italian, you will do it. You'll achieve it one bite, one acronym at a time, and eventually you'll be able to communicate military language in such a way, you actually sound like you know what you're doing. And it's a good way to sell a plan. And guess what? It's another skill that will take you into civilian, what would we call it, Lauren? Um, I'm not it sure. translates. Yeah, exactly. Because I usually, when there's a group of you guys talking and you start talking abbreviations or army terms, I just kind of go make sandwiches because I really do not understand anything you're saying. I'm a girl. That's right. And I'm not really interested, <laughs> to be honest. You know, I'll just go make sandwiches and do my hair. The, the reason why we do it is because there is no emotion about what we talk about. There, however, there is intent. And there's also an understanding that if you don't know how to communicate in the military language, what else don't you know? So it's not about um, it's not about showing off. It is about how to get a regulated uh, intent across using a communication, a language that is known by all within the technical and tactical sphere, yep. which sells your intent. Okay, yep. in a way that sounds professional, not barbaric. And I'm going to yeah, explain exactly. it to you. It's still communication, isn't it? Look, Mr. P's there, you know, shooting some terms off, and obviously you yep. never forget. As a wifey, the only one I ever needed to know was ROP. That's it. Restriction of privileges. <laughs> yep, that was it. <laughs> Where's the titanium? Ah, titanium, Mr. P. Bam, just there. Thank you, mate. There. Where's yours? Okay, that's a good one there. We've got SMEAC there. And that is what we do for a patrol for orders. And that is situation, mission, execution, administration, logistics. And the last one is communications. Okay. Um, you've also forgot the T that's at the start, although we don't say T SMEAC. And that's topography, etc. cetera. Um, right. So that's of orders. For all of this to happen, we have to have a thing called SOPs. And that is standing standard oper operating procedures, SOPs. TTPs, tactical techniques and procedures, is different. Okay, this is gonna lead me on to something else. And there is a better video coming out, team, that's gonna be an express version of this, a production, a slicker version, so that you could slam it down fast like a VB, vermin broth, solo, wide mouth. A good reference. Whichever you choose. Okay, Mr. Buckaroonie, Mr. P. You throw one up there too, Mr. P. If you're a military member, throw up an acronym. Throw yeah. up uh, uh, some military jargon there so yeah, people understand whether it be your appointment if, title, etc. Yeah, and if you're not, um, make sure you ask if there's one that you don't know what it means or something. Ask Mr. P, what's that mean or something? Because I'm sure he'll be happy to. Why is Fugly in hospital? Is it because of the stab? No, Fugly. No, he had a 10... Millimeter shower blow up on me, got cut to shit. I hope you're okay, Fugly. He's and um, just, it, Fugly works with glass. He's a glazier, yeah. um, so whenever anything goes wrong there, it's never good. Yeah, I hope you're okay. For Doctor Slip on the phone, you'd love it. Okay, I'm not sure what that one's about, Dave. Um, guys and gals. 
and I, and I do hope you're okay, Fugly. You know, this is a guy that's also allergic to grass, which was the reason why he wanted to go to rap instead of army. <laughs> Fugly. Okay. great. Okay. I'm sure Jim is taking good care of him. I'm sure she is too, and the little one too. Yep. Alex G says, for those going to Kapuka in 2021, please make sure you visit your local athlete's foot and get yourself some decent runners that will suit you. And that doesn't mean the ones you want to get, it's the one that suit your feet. If you if you like Nikes, you might get told ASICs. If you like ASICs, you might get told Nikes. It's all about the fit. Okay, you're a professional athlete. You're going to get paid to be one. Um, when you join the military, it is important to understand uh a whole bunch of terms that you're going to go into. And I'm going to give context to some of these too. Some of these yeah. are going to lead on to something that's fairly important what you hear that's going on at the moment with the investigation into the Special Forces Fraternity, which is also bubbling down now potentially into the Royal Australian Regiment, etc. So we've got things called task verbs, and that is the statement that tells you exactly what is going to happen as part of patrol. We have appointment titles that tell us what we're going to be within our cause. Example, Foxhound is infantry. Okay, We have engineers that are hold fast. We have transport that are playtime. We have uh, artillery that are shell drake. We have signals that is pronto. That's for you, Mr. Buckaroon. All right, what else we got? We've got boxwood, electrical, biological, and... Huh? Boxwood what? is nuclear, chemical, and biological warfare officer. You know, you've got all these different things, but you will learn them all fast. There's a few things you need to know. All right. There's four phases to the attack, and we're going to talk our way all the way into why we use these things, etc. the communications. There's four phases of WAR. You can't say that word out loud or the algorithm comes after you. And that is the advance, then there's the attack, then there's the defense, and then there's the withdrawal. Those are there. Inside there, there is things that you need to do. There is three types of patrols. Tell me if I'm wrong. There is fighting patrols. There is reconnaissance patrols. And there is, I believe, logistic patrols. One of the things that you will not often hear, but it's it's true and people don't like to hear it, is there's only a couple of corps that can really go on a patrol at all. A fighting patrol, that is. And that is infantry and it's armoured corps. Other than that, there is no other real corps that can go on a fighting patrol as such, and I'll explain why. That all falls into what we call TTPs, SOPs. Okay, that's tactical techniques, sorry, techniques. I'm getting ahead of my skates here. Hey, take a breath. Uh, SOPs, standard operating procedures. Okay, then TTPs, techniques. How the hell did I forget that? I've been talking about it for 20 years. Anyway. Anyway. Okay. So um, what happens is, with these, that teaches us all about actions on. And actions on means when this happens, this is the reaction, and then that creates a drill, and the drill doesn't need a command. Okay? Tactical techniques and procedures. There we go. All right. So... SOPs, Standard Operating Procedures. You are going to learn through repetition and repetition. You're going to hear all the time people from infantry, especially, you know, and artillery as well, that do the same drills over and over and over and over again. And the reason why they do that is that it's something you can nearly perfect. It is a set drill. It's designed to become a smooth muscle memory, a reflex action, so that you can do that. It's boring, it's hard, it's arduous. But it takes its toll. It's PT in itself. But what happens is you learn to respond to an incident without command needing to come into that, which means they have more time now to come up with a playbook reaction to the information that comes back to them via a fire control order, sorry, target indication, etc. Okay, so we're learning all of these things to make the threat simplified. Once we get to a mission, and we're about to go on a mission, there is a mission statement. You're going to hear a subject that's called before. Uh, You'll hear a statement that says, and that's an order in military movies. One thing you're never going to hear in the Army, Air Force, or Navy is someone say, and that's an order. Why why is that, Mr. Buckaroonie? Is he here? Mr. Buckaroonie's still here. 
Okay. Why is it you never hear someone say, and that's an order? Okay, I'll tell you, so he doesn't have to type. We shouldn't make Mr. Buck Rooney the second best channel on YouTube <laughs> from North <laughs> Queensland after work. It's because everything that I say to someone below my rank is an order. Everything that someone says to me above my rank is an order. If they ask me to do something, they're actively telling me you're going to do it. You don't go, oh, I thought you were just asking me. Or ask nicely. That doesn't happen. So I'll give you an example. There is titles, and none of this stuff is a secret team. In case you're thinking, Kaz is giving away secrets. I'm not. You can find out all of this on the internet, believe me. You know, and, and almost every country uses it. It's no black art, and that's not racist. Um, so you're going to hear the call signs, for example, of rifle companies. You've got Alpha Company, Bravo Company, Charlie Company, Delta. Alpha Company is going to have one zero, which is going to be the command element. One one, Alpha, which is going to be one platoon Alpha Company. You're going to have one two, which is two platoon, my old platoon, okay, in Alpha Company. And then you're going to have one three, which is three platoon in Alpha Company. And that goes all the way up to Bravo, okay, two one, two two, two three. Okay, then there's going to be Charlie Company, which is three one, three two, three three. And then there's going to be four one four two four three. Okay, within the Delta Company, you know, which is now normally a training company, and that can be broken down even further into one one Alpha, one one Bravo, one one Charlie, which means one one Alpha is one section, one platoon Alpha Company. Right. The reason why I say this is when you get to a mission statement, which is a statement, when orders occur through the military appreciation process where intelligence and all the other cores are going to feed information down through the chain. And that's going to go to the military appreciation process where the commanders above you unpack that and they decide what the enemy center of gravity is, what they decide what the, uh, what the critical vulnerabilities are, something we can target, what our strengths and weaknesses are. Okay, what will occur is then they will come up with a plan, how to nullify that as part of a bigger plan an incorporated plan, a multi-faceted, multi-syllable uh, operation, or it might be an individual one. And then from there, you'll get your set task within an AO, which is an area of operations. Within an area of operations, there's tails, tactical areas of responsibility. When you go out as a call sign, if you see a section go out, then it's normally after a couple of people. It's normally there to send out to deny enemy freedom of movement within an area. You're going there to become a presence. That's it. Okay. If you're going out as a platoon, that normally means you're going out in force to look for the fight. And I'm talking about fighting patrols here, not reconnaissance patrols. And there's a byproduct of fighting patrols, okay, which is information that comes in, which is patrol reports that come back from after every patrol. What do you see? What do you see? What do you see? We collect that together. We send it back up to those guys from Intelligence Corps. And then they look for a common thread amongst that. And then that can give deductions to what they believe is happening. I have sympathies, sympathies through human teams. Okay, what it can mean is, is that an isolated incident? Is that something that's starting to happen? Is that a new trend that we're seeing? Or is that just an outlying action that has been noticed, seen, observed, and it gets paid off? But, at the end of the day, if we're going to talk about fighting patrols, and these ones are important, you'll know straight away as a call sign, you know, whether you're doing a large operation, you might get told, for example, 4-2. So that means we're talking about 11 platoon here, yeah? 4, meaning Delta. 2, meaning the second platoon in. 2 platoon. If it says 4-2, that means it's a complete call sign, a 4-2. So we're looking at at least 30 men and what they come with. 4-2 is 2, is the way it'll always start out. And then there's going to be a task verb. The task verb straight away, as a commander, you're going to be writing down, and there's one word, one, that will get your attention like a Zyrtec. One word. If you say 4-2 is too clear, all enemy in objective kangaroo, no later than, 19, 1200 kilo in order to deny enemy freedom of movement. Okay, no worries. We go out there, we do a patrol. We're good to go. 
We clear that area. We don't have to get in a gunfight. As long as there's no one left in that area and there's no influence within that area, we're good to go. There's one word, if I go back, that makes a massive deal. And that is if the task verb is four to... Is anyone... Am I losing anyone here? No, I think people are listening. Okay, if, if you get told while you're sitting around with your filthy little notebook, okay, with a torch in your mouth maybe, with a pen, with everyone behind you standing up with a notebook in their hand to prevent them from going to sleep, and they're all listening in, and you hear 4-2 as part of, okay, 4-0, uh, okay, uh, is to destroy all enemy, vicinity, kangaroo, in order to deny enemy, not freedom of movement, but marry up with blah, 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 whatever. The, the, the word is destroy. Because if you don't destroy that call sign, they can't get away, you failed your mission. You actively have to get them, entrap them, encircle them, shape them, and destroy them. So there will be a fight. There's going to be a fight. So the word destroy means you can't just scare them off. You can't do an overt patrol. You can't do a noisy approach to give them a chance to escape. You're going to need a way of getting in there prior to that time, reverse engineer, because the, the task verb is destroy, and get into a position that they don't escape. Any of them. So, if you've heard the word destroy, and you're going, oh, Okay, that's going to get everyone's attention. You're thinking, well, how many of them are there? What level of command are we going against? Destroy how? Is it going to be through manoeuvre? Is it going to be by remaining below the detection threshold and getting to a stage where we flush them out with a combined attack from another call sign while we go into an ambush on a route that has now been shaped by indirect fire, it can't, that's where the cunning of the battlefield comes from. But believe me, when you hear the word destroy, that's a big deal. You know, that's a big deal. And that's not telling you, and this, it's hard to explain. You've got your Akoka, which is going to talk about the ground. You've got Salute Him, that's going to talk about all the abbreviations and the things to do with the threat force. You know what you're going to be up against. You're going to be planning from their point of view, you might have a Red Force planning team that goes, I would do this, I would do that. Oh, I didn't expect that, but now I'll plan for it. You are going to look from the other side of the coin and plan based off what his only options are to potentially escape, and you're going to nullify those and then st remove them. It's a serious business. Right. Um, do we have any questions on that one? On the, oh, look, there's a young chap who's got a question that's a little bit off topic. Okay. He's not joined up yet, but he wants to know how he gets Lance Corporal stripes. Can he get them during IET? No. No, and I think he should just try and enlist first because it may not yep. be as easy as he thinks. Work hard, keep his head down, and apply for courses as they come up, correct? Yeah, and you know what? It's the worst rank. And it's the yeah. worst course you'll do in the military. It's not usually something people really want to do, but they do it because they want it. Well, it's, do, it's a logical step to where you want to go. The Lance Corporal is the mother of a call sign. Yeah. It is the logistics um, commander, yeah. so to sure. speak. Thank Lance you. Corporal, you have no tactical real yeah. nous, despite the fact that it is the hardest course, I believe, in the Army because it's the first time where you'll yeah. actually be commanding people in a call sign outside your loop but you'll be taught every single thing, every single thing. Yeah, and, and it's a, a, John Paul didn't enjoy it. He said it was a lot of extra work, mm. but not very much reward. No. So don't know why you're quite thinking that. As far as questions for the um, the topic is going, there's a lot of probably quite, they're probably quite simple to you, but to, to the people who are asking them, they're not. Yeah. Um, like, what is a jube? A jube? Yep. A jube is just a, is just a new soldier. Hey, Jordo, how you going, mate? He's subscribed. Yeah, that, that, Good to have you here. Oh, welcome. Yeah, zombie. Look at him on the yeah. screen. I've got to change that up for you, too. <laughs> Good to have you here. Can we get some uh, thumbs up there for Michael Jordan, who just turned up too, please? And Luke is loving life. I think that's a fantastic That is name. great. Makes me happy. Yeah, me too. Ashton Kutcher. 
at Free the Fish. Okay, I'm not sure what, what that's about, but... You might have to look it up. <laughs> Pepsi is delicious. Jay Hayes has been caught with Biden fake news straight up. Why don't you Why don't you go to Philadelphia, mate? Here's a good question. Matt has asked, on average, how long does it take to pick up all the jargon? It'll all, it'll all come from command. You're not yeah. going to understand a lot of this, even as a private... Lance Corporal, you, you'd need to know it as Section Commander. You'll definitely need to know it as a Section Commander moving towards Platoon Sergeant who is assisting a Platoon Commander with their tactical responsibilities and manoeuvres as a call sign preparation of orders. But it, it's, it's, an interesting, it's an interesting subject and you'll actually like it and you'll be invited into more conversations when you're able to explain the difference between for example, a TAI, a targetable area of interest, which is a delayed fire control order basically for a call sign, yeah. um, with an SBF, a support by fire, with yeah. a uh, FUP, with a LOE, uh, with a uh, limit of exploitation. Uh, there's, there's so many different things, but they all have an understanding. And when everyone knows what you're talking about, it's actually really yeah. simple. It really yeah, is simple. Once- it can sound like gibberish, but everybody, that you are communicating. It has real <laughs> substance in the communication. It's not just to make someone feel like an outsider. It no. actually is a really good way to um, communicate and verbalise really quite complex and abstract things in a very mm. um, succinct way. So, And almost um, all armies yep. use the same ones. Yeah. Oh, there you go. That's helpful. Luke is loving life. Said all you need to know is what a jack. So you and is. <laughs> a noob is a new guy. Yeah. And and never feel bad about being called a noob. Never be no. caught bad. Feel bad about being called a lid. Everyone was one. And that's that's right. And that's time related. So you just be the best lid. You know. All you've got to do is survive your first trip outfield. And you've already proved everyone, one, you're a stayer. Two, you can be relied on now to, to finish everything you start. And if people don't go outfield or people fall out or you show that you've done a better job than them, you can actually overtake them. And someone can be in the army for three or four years and then actually lose that much credibility. They might as well be lower than the lid. You know, there is no room for thin skin in the military. Um, I'm going to give you a quick explanation here. Buckaroonie, this would have this would have made your head spin, mate. I had a young fella yesterday explain to me on the bat phone, and I, and I really hope this is not fake news because this won't happen to people from in the trenches with Kaz, which is why you're here, why you subscribe, so that we can give you a gentle dunk into that fucking freezing water before you hit it. And that is, and I had to swear for emphasis then, had to. Anything less would be a felony. Vanilla ice. (laughs) Vanilla ice. Right there. Um, I heard that a platoon just had six people get to Kapuka and put in their ROR, which is their um, uh, basically their discharge on request because they didn't like the way they were spoken to. Oh, good heavens. I really hope that that is not true. I really do because those people, my God. They stole a position of, a, of an adult. Only a child would pull out of the army because they don't like the way they were spoken to. A child. Yeah, yeah what were they thinking in the first place? Darth! Blue cow from Darth. Darth, you're a legend. Thank you very much, mate. That's a can of dog food right there. I'm going to make my dog eat it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I had to just wash another thumb sized version of his bloody lunch out of his butt cavoodles i'm gonna shave that dog's ass i'd better <laughs> he's getting some dangleberries is he? he is he is <laughs> luke's love and life my platoon had about four or five rors it's disgusting it really uh-huh. is and it's because we have lowered the standard so low that it is so hard for you to stand out as someone who's got this as a calling and i fear it's because we're going for too many minority groups that yeah, bring them in to win the attitude test but in turn we actually lose a candidate 
I don't even think this is practical in life, whether someone's joining the service or not. You have to, part of maturity is having a bit of a thick skin. Yeah. You know, it's not getting upset all the time at everything everyone says. It's not playing victim. It's not, mm. people can say anything they want to you. You don't have to take it on board. What's that saying that you can't give offence, you can only take it? You don't yeah, get... we're not so much offended by what people say, but our reaction to it, which is really quite true. Yeah. If I someone gets offended by what you say, but it's a fact that you said it and you weren't saying it as a personal attack, that's weakness on their behalf. Hey, yeah. Daz, how you going? Yeah. And Timmy Doust is out of here for a bit. I Hi, get Timmy. that. Yeah, but I just don't understand Timmy's how gone. they're even going to work in Woolies or anywhere with no. an attitude like that, let alone defence, you know. What are they going to, how would they really cope with an enemy that wants to kill them? Not just call them names, but do them physical harm. Well, look at Jordo. I'd take you in my platoon now if I had one, mate. I'd be disappointed if I wasn't abused at Kapuka. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I agree. I would be disappointed if you weren't abused. I'll, get, I'll, get, I'll give you a hot tip. Be fair. I'll give you a hot tip. The instructors at Kapuka, it takes him a couple of weeks to even remember your name. It's not personal, team. You're yeah. the one that turned up there and said, I want this, pay me. Exactly. Okay, here you are. We'll pay yeah. you. Yeah, that's all you're going to do. Not, you know, even in general life, uh, outside of even service, you have to be a bit tougher, people. You know, you can't be always getting upset by things people say. Whatever happened to sticks and stones may break my bones. Never broke mine. Yeah, no, and that, but that's the thing is names really will never hurt you. Look, you, all you ever see is people attacking the low picking fruit. The people they know aren't going to slam them back. You know, no one ever goes. You never see a greenie getting angry at India or China. You yeah, never so see I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a uh, uh, you never see someone talking about domestic violence and yelling at a Kiwi or a, an Islamic person. You know, uh, in reference to Sharia law. You know, yeah. they always come after someone with chivalry who's minding their own business having yeah. a coffee and, yeah. and you get slammed with something. You go, yeah. what have I done? And we've talked about this before, you know, in terms of, you know, how frustrated I get with the women's movement because they're here talking about microaggressions when there's real aggressions. Yep. they could, If they really, really had a heart for it, that's where they'd be. That's what they'd be doing. You know, that's really what they would be doing. But I don't even think these people are getting offended. I think we just all, society as a whole has been told, if you've got a victim card, pull it. Instead of push through, be hard, achieve something. Well, by rights, the big red corn chip should be getting considered racist for their, their slanderous attacks on Australia at the moment. We're the minority. Do we really care what they say about ah, us? We don't. I don't. We don't give a damn. They're the ones who are getting offended all the time. They're the ones who overreacted at us saying, can we look into how that started yeah. and look how they've reacted? Yep. Well, No, we don't care. We don't care what they say. They we, can fill their boots, sounds whatever. Like, sounds like a song. Yeah. Guys and gals, when you get to, um, uh, to the patrols we were talking about before, and, I, and I've got, really got to clarify this so that you do not walk away from this a bit offended remember when you join the military you basically choose the core you choose to either be in the logistics or whether you go to the support elements or whether you go to the arms core elements now when you do these patrols and i stated before the three patrols are fighting patrol reconnaissance patrol and, and, and i reckon you could throw in logistics patrol as well um, or capability patrol Signals Corps, Bucko, it's not a fighting patrol. You know, it's a logistics patrol, it's a capability patrol. They go out there, they create a defensive position. It's not a defensive position, they're not really digging in, so it's not defensive position. Uh, they have to move if indirect fire comes, so it's not defensive, defended, defensive. Okay, because you have to be below the surface, you have to be able to actually stay when indirect fire comes in. For that to be actually be classed as a defendable position, which means every single person needs to be able to be in at least a shell scrape, okay? Which is one um, entrenching tool depth, so you can get below the surface of the earth. Okay, there is logistics, 
patrols of a convoy that needs to go from point A to B, and that might have a commander, a logistics or a convoy commander. But they are not going to be the tactical commander of a call sign of Foxhound, which is infantry that might be going along with it. Consider them the pilgrims, and the actual call sign that's there defending them is the crusader, protecting the pilgrims, so to speak. They're going to have a completely different order system. They're going to have completely different uh, actions on what happens if there's indirect. What happens if there's a Kazavak? What happens if there's a breakdown? What happens if there's a default drill that needs to be done? What is going to happen if there's an attack? What happens if there's an ambush? And there's a difference between being attacked and being ambushed. With an ambush being a surprise attack by a force lying in... Uh, by, a surprise attack on an unsuspecting enemy by a force lying in wait. And you'll know by the volume of fire that it's an actual uh, an ambush as such. So never get your balls in a knot. Understand that there is fighting patrols which can consist of... Wait two seconds. We've got uh, Delegate. Love of the stream, Kaz. Applied, still try to decide uh, infantry uh, digger or officer. Uh, I want the experience, uh, the crap amongst the men, but being told to do officer. Look, completely two different lives. And this is going to make it real easy for you, mate. Try for officer. And then if you don't, go for enlisted soldier. And the reason why I say that is because you can't just decide to be an officer. You'll go in, you'll do an OSB, yeah. and they might say, no, you didn't do well enough either in your, um, in your uh, aptitude test or you have not shown us through your personality on the OSB or your experience in life uh, lacking uh, evidence of, that's evidence, same word, evidence Just of case. leadership, so to speak. So how about you don't get in top of your skates and you go and do that. So that's fine, mate. Go for officer. And if you fall short, anything less is a felony. Again, vanilla rice, you'll be fine. Go for yeah. officer, and then if you fall short, go for enlisted yeah. soldier. Yeah. yeah, we also really need, you know, fresh new officers with great attitudes we of do. respecting the men. So that's a really, you know, don't don't feel bad if you do get in as an officer. That's a really great position. And total eclipse of the heart. And we need you more tonight. We do. We <clears> need <throat> you more now than ever. Delegate, we fucking need you more than ever. And if you only hold me tight. Yeah, that's going too far. <laughs> Mr. P will be loving that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, that was just for you, mate, because I've, at the moment, I know it's getting too annoying doing the Nutsu Cows. It's getting too annoying doing the Calamari. So it's up to me this weekend to come up with something new to put on there. So when you hit the ground running on Monday, you're pissing yourself laughing yeah, at the performances that come up. Yeah, something fresh. Something fresh, so fresh. Alex, one uh, one in all in, you will hear that a lot. Don't laugh at others getting in trouble. Trust me, if the seco catch you laughing, you will get it worse. But I, I, yep. I'll always laugh. I will snigger with you as someone's folly teaches everyone else a lesson. It's only jackness that really chaps my ass like, yep. a, like, yep. a, like a sailor. If it's because they have a tendency to laugh if someone's telling them off. And I think it's probably, if you're the one getting told off, better to just have some self-control and have a giggle later. Yep. Yep. Because yep. that may make someone more angry at you and it might put a target on your back. Well, well, one thing Mr. P would admit, and so would Simon Powell. Good to have you here, Simon. I've still got your Fitbit down here. Yeah, great. He's keen to get it. That was his 2021 prediction was that he may get it. I might do it this year then. I might yeah. do it this year. I might yeah, do it tomorrow. That'll, that'll prove his prediction wrong. Um, <laughs> Mr. Baccaroonie would admit to me there is one thing that makes us goddamn angry, and that is if someone does an ND, another acronym, negligent discharge, okay, or a UD, an unauthorised discharge of a weapon, in close proximity to either civilians or yourself or others, and people laugh. I get really goddamn angry when people laugh at that. Sometimes it's just a human reaction. Oh, shit. He's fucked. You know? Yeah. 
Yeah, like when, like I said, it's kind of like when your sibling is getting told off and you're not. It's kind of funny. Yep. Yep. You can kind of enjoy it a bit. Um, Peter Cram has asked, Kaz, how often do enlisted move over to become commissioned officers? It doesn't really happen. In saying that, I saw Mr. John A, who was a platoon sergeant, when uh, in 2002, is now the commander of, uh, of a battalion. You normally never see someone go over to the dark side, then make it above major. So <laughs> it is rare, but it normally happens once you get to sergeant. You've shown you've got acumen, that you are a very good at your role. You know, it normally happens as a senior NCO. And while we're here, I'd like to say uh, a quick call out to um, the more than spectacular representation across the Royal Australian Regiment by a lot of the people that I call brother, you know, that are in battalions now as the RSMs in all of these units, flying the flag, giving great advice to officers, shaping the future for other officers and soldiers. And the message to young officers would be, although it is impossible for you to show a, the moral courage required to be a great officer in a peacetime army, because all you'll do is lose your job. You wait for your opportunities and then you choose a time to shine, to fly, etc. Yep. Be careful you don't get over your skates. You can, you can be completely loyal to your soldiers and there is a time where you can be, um, it can sound like it's disrespectful uh, to the CO, to the chief of the army, to the um, uh, battalion commander, to the company commander. But the soldiers will hate it if you back them up regardless and you can't identify when you're being led by a dickhead. So what you can do as an officer, you know, for any officers that might be listening, is you can say to the platoon sergeant, platoon sergeant, I'm giving you permission to let the guys know the position that I'm in, okay, and that I share their feelings. That's all I'm going to say on that matter. Never ask me about it again. And then I can go, section commanders, come here. You're about to get told to eat the big one, to take it, and understand that the platoon commander is in exactly the same position as what you are, and he's taken a bigger chunk than you. So just know that he's in exactly the same position as you, and he was happy to let you know that. But you know that he will never tell you that face to face. We've got some questions of, is it, what's it called when your um, weapon goes off and you didn't mean it to? That's a negligent discharge. Is that what it is? is a negligent it, discharge means you're such a fuck up that you could have killed a friend yeah. because you couldn't control your weapon safely. It's not, not good at all, is it? You and, know, at all. I, I believe John Paul was in a or, or knew someone who was in an APC and one went off in there and their ears were ringing for a long, long time. Yeah. Yeah. An unauthorised discharge might yeah. mean that you didn't have ROE acronym. Yeah term, military, rules of engagement, yep. that you might not have had permission or clarification and you fired your weapon system when you weren't supposed to. And again, you can get discipline reaction for that as well. Yeah. Okay, there's a question from Survival Man. He said, after you finish being a soldier, is there, I'm guessing he means training, is there supplementary training such as forest survival or mountain specialist? No, nah, not really. We've got survival school skills and schools for all of that sort of stuff. Yeah, but it's a little bit people, like people that do martial like, arts. You've got freaks in the army yeah. that are really good in that, and that's their thing. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. That's more. That's more of a hobby to people that do it. You know. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I think so too. Mm. You know, John Paul's a bushcraft nut. You know, but I guess that was helpful with his role. I don't know much about it, but you know. Jordan, Jordan D just brought up something. Well, then I'm going to tell him something really funny here. I'll give you an example. Um, Jordan is just saying that I know you do survival courses in Butterworth, which is in Malaysia, which used to be considered an operational tour. Now, I know some people that did a, uh, a survival course in Butterworth. And in the location they were in, they got dropped off and they said, you're going to be here for this amount of time. They never found anything beyond a lizard 
basically, and they were like, for God's sake. We, we're not out here long enough to actually die. There's some bracken water we can drink. But we would be dead if we were here for a prolonged period of time. And then guess what happened? What? A monkey <laughs> came along. They got it. They caught it. They killed it. They yeah. killed the monkey. They cooked the monkey. And this was out of necessity, team. Necessity. Yeah. And they only had one day to go to the survival course. And that... It was mob mentality when they killed the monkey. It was part of survival. It was part of what you have to do. They were doing it for food. But when they saw it, once the hair was burnt off, they go, it is actually a human that you're looking at going, where the fuck do you bite it? Where do you start? Do you, do you eat its arm? Every part of the monkey looks like a human except for the tail. Maybe the butt. Well, well yeah, you would think maybe. But they don't carry much body weight. No. You know? So they end up cutting the arm off to try and make it look less human. Like a lamb shank or something. Similar. Right? Yeah. And only one guy ended up having a go and he bit the arm and hadn't even broken the skin and already felt like I might as well be possessed. I've just tasted human, basically. Yeah, right. <laughs> so this poor monkey died for nothing. No one tasted it and they all went home and would have been dead if they were out there for another fucking 20 days. You know, so we are so uh, different to what we think we are. And there is survival nuts. It'll go out there that'll eat roaches. It'll do all that protein, no dramas. But I'm not that guy. I'd eat insects. The only insect I'd eat is a Morton Bay bug. Yeah, they're yum. But I would would eat them. You know, apparently that's the future of food security. No, thank you. (laughs) Don't you reckon? It's not true. The Burger King have already got... Food Pretend well me. Made. Don't you think like those crunchy grasshoppers no. got fried like crisps? No. They look I used to watch them do it in Rwanda. You know, oh, and, the, and the reason why I hated it, it looked great, Lauren. Mm. But they were so used to eating them like they were Smith's chips. Yeah. Which are nowhere near as good as tubes, the delicious bite sized saucy snack. <laughs> That you'd see these kids and these adults stuffing them into their mouth after they'd got them in the wok with the with the cooking oil, yeah. Yeah. and you would see them bite them in half, and the guts just all rolling down their chin. Ah, uh, the guts is something different. I haven't thought. Uh, of and the you're guts, like, oh but... Jesus! And then I saw stupid shit like the in uh, in Cambodia in Vietnam where they'll eat tarantulas and they cook it so that it's still mushy on the inside of the bum. Oh, and really? when they bite it, it squirts up the side of their face, and you're going. Because they look yummy too, but I'd want it totally crisp. No, nah. I'm happy with I, pizza. I put one gooey and soft because I don't want it. Nuts, I'll buy me own food, thanks. <laughs> Foodie, I'm, I'm telling you, this is gooey duck. There is less poverty now in the world than there has ever been in the history of the world. There is no need for us to be eating bugs. Willie. You ain't even going to survive in the uh, in the hot as Southeast Asian climates if you refuse to eat cockroaches and spiders. I've already been in all these climates we live. That's why I had ration packs. And when yeah. I didn't have <laughs> and when I didn't have ration, I'm not going over there as a savage. No. You know? You're hoping not to be there during an apocalypse. I'm not gonna go over there with a sling and a shield and yeah. a loincloth. That would have been more comfortable than the body armour that we had that was only good for stopping being spat on if you came back from Vietnam. Yeah. And they even put, like, scorpions on sticks. Yeah, they, they do. They look kind of yummy, like a Dagwood dog, but a scorpion. Yeah, but completely different. Like, it actually tastes good. Yeah. There's, there's, <laughs> at, at least a vegan can eat a Dagwood dog because it's not like there's meat in it. And a Dagwood <laughs> dog in Asia is actually dog. <laughs> oh, no, come on now. Well, I eat dogs. No problem over there. Yeah, no, that's right. That's, you know, we don't need to talk about that because I don't like the way they do it sometimes. Carl, you and I can eat the ration packs, mate. We'll we'll stick with a normal food. Yeah. Yeah. Jay, what about a geo duck? I don't even know what a that is. Oh, is that that rat? Duck. I sent you a photo of one once. It's, it's, dis- girl- yeah, it's disgusting. I get so much stuff sent to me, but I remember that that was something yeah. that gave me taste bud like trauma. Salad. Trauma. Salad. Trauma. <laughs> when in doubt, drink an extra Coke. Here's here's a question for you, and I'd wonder how Mr. P would go for this, but look at this. We've got Leo, the stuntman for life, 
who still needs a haircut. <laughs> would you eat roadkill? Yes. I would eat roadkill. Yeah, I'm not of course. Feel funny about it. No. I feel like it would taste like car. It could. You know, like petrol and. How many times like... has it run over? Yeah, I don't know. And don't and know. what sort of roadkill was it? Yeah. I human. Don't know. Human. No, come on now. We're not talking about long pig. <laughs> How long do you need to be in for SF selection? Is that something you apply for as an outside scoop? No. Uh, delegate. There will be a road trip that will go around for commandos or SASR that will go around letting you know this is when we're recruiting and it'll be way in advance. Here's a 12-week program, etc. Boom. you know, And then you go and do psychological testing for that additional uh, testing. And then from there, you will be told yes or no, given leave from your unit uh, in accordance with your uh, monthly uh, reporting we can tell you, no, you are not the droid they're looking for and we will not embarrass our call sign by giving you an opportunity to waste their time or we think you're absolutely good to go with this and then we'll just put in control measures so we can see how you're going and make sure that the extra liberties that you have, time to train individually, etc., that you're on program. Yep, so you'll get plenty of time and, and, and people will help you with that process, mate. Yeah. Um, Jay reckons roadkill beef jerky is delicious. Do you know I don't like jerky? How long has it been there for? Yeah, that's it. that's what Sad Boy said. Depends on how long. Like, like, if you've just hit a kangaroo and instead of it just rotting on the side of the road, I totally think it's great to take it home as long as you know how to process it properly. Like, I wouldn't know how to do all that. I'd need a man to do it for me. But or A know, man. A bush lady to yeah, do it. Yeah, a man. Yeah, but I, I just don't know. I don't know. I'm funny about where it comes from. <laughs> well, I, I tell you now, you just asked a question that no one could answer easier than Kirby Hamilton. Yeah. And that question is, do you even like jerky? Kirby Hamilton would tell you, as yeah. a man, you would yeah. never ask a man that because the only answer you're going to get is, I love the taste of VB. Oh. <laughs> Everyone that is a gentleman, a man, loves beef jerky. And if you all, didn't, all, you'd all say you did. Love it. All my young men absolutely love it. Yeah, I love it. If I get it for them, it's just gone straight away. T Y uh, Lopez. Yep. Lopez. <laughs> I hate all ration packs. I hate you know, them all. There used yeah. to be like a tin of stuff that had like mainly lamb's vein in it. There was beef and gravy. Beef and gravy used to be my favourite. But if you have it hot, it's delicious. But if you have it cold, there'd be pieces of artery just floating around inside it and pieces of jelly, meat and fat. But your body craves it. You know, it yeah. gets it, it melts down into it when you cook it. But if you don't cook it, you can see it. And it's like you're eating pasta, but it's artery. Disgusting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Like most army families, my kids and that have end up with the leftover bits and pieces of everyone's ration packs. But there was one in particular that they really didn't even accept if, if people gave it to them. That was that was it ham and egg. I didn't mind the ham and egg. Oh, but that doesn't make sense, ham and egg coming in a tin. Yeah, it was just the smell. I think it had a funny smell when you opened it and it was it didn't look very appetizing. But tell you what, they loved that cheese. The cheese is great, but I tell you what. Yeah. It felt like I had a cannonball up my anus. Yeah. I mate, I'm, you, you're going to need some maturity with your ears here, team. I went on this. It's a story about to come out. Okay. I went on one of the hardest um, trips that I'd been on on a naval vessel, and that wasn't just defending myself in the showers like I was back in Alcatraz, which I've never been to. Hey, you're talking about a sore bum and a naval vessel. That's right. I had extreme pain de coitus. Right. And, okay. and this has happened twice in my life, which was probably one of the reasons why I've got a lower bowel disease now. Um, and basically what happened was I was so sick of the food from the ration packs that were eating on the vessel, not to mention the crap food when we ate last on the ship, after the captain and officers ate, which is something that army never does, we let our men eat first before we eat as commanders and as senior NCOs. 
And I remember just going, give me some more cheese, give me some more cheese, and eating the tins of cheese. Because I'd been taught the secret of the cheese, which I can tell you now, the secret of the cheese, yep. is to heat the cheese up until it's melting. You cut the core yep. out, you pour some water, it gets all through it, and that'll evaporate as the cheese melts. And you drop seasonal, which uh, onto it, the spice, and then you stir it around the molten cheese. And I used to eat tin after tin after tin of that. And I realized that I hadn't fired a cannon yep. for over a week. What I'm talking about is the poop. Yep. And we got off the ship and I was like, oh, I need to go. I need to go. And everyone's getting ready to get off the ship. And there was these ration packs you were not allowed to touch. But there's other foods with inside the ration pack that stop you from being so regular. And some of that is the chocolate. The and, white chocolate? Yeah, yeah, white chocolate. It's, it's like so dog shit that you run over with a lawnmower. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, mate, I was in that toilet, and I remember trying to reach inside myself with, like, a crab nipper <laughs> oh to, to try and clean myself out. But oh, my gosh. It was ten times worse when I went to Tully, and the same thing happened. I'd survived on the cheese and then got back. And it was my birthday, my partner wasn't there, didn't know where she was at the time. Yeah, still never found out where she was. It wasn't where she was supposed to be, I tell you. Thank and you. Um, again, all I remember was, I was getting ready to call an ambulance. Oh. And there was... Have you not learnt your lesson the first time? Takes three times for me, baby. Three times. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh. All I'll say is... There was some pretty unflattering wall painting. Oh, good heavens, once you get that plug out, huh? It w no, it was that bad, just from oh. trying to use it and then trying to push on both sides of the walls to try and push. It was like... Oh, uh, no. So I no. know what it's like to have a baby out of something that's yeah. not meant to have a baby. You maybe do. I have heard people explain birth very similarly. Yeah. Okay, Simon actually has a really good roadkill story. Yep. He said, at the RAF base in Tyndall, one of the switchboard operators um, hit a kangaroo on the way home after the shift. She yep. was stuck on the side of the road with her broken car until a very old Holden station wagon full of locals pulled up. They looked at her, looked at the car, grabbed the kangaroo and left her there. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, no waste. In East Timor, if you hit a dog... You know, you can't think they're coming running down there to get angry for hitting their dog. Nope. They're putting bids on whose plate it's going on. Yeah, fair enough, too. And that's, so that's fine. There's no waste. You know, yeah, that, exactly. I never saw it in Africa, but apparently with uh, the canned poaching where you actually uh, pay to kill an elephant, and usually it's a problematic elephant or, or, yep. or large animal, yep. what the villagers can do, they said you won't even see them. Kabang. You shoot your trophy kill, it's paid for, the money goes to the villagers, but then all of a sudden the sound of a thousand feet as they turn up with their knives, and they reckon that elephant is down to bones in a couple of hours, and the whole village will get fed off that elephant. Hmm. Yeah. Um, have, do you need to ring your little darling? Uh, oh, shit. Jay just gave us the reminder. Wait two seconds, Lauren, I'll call you back. Yeah, no worries. I've got the phone up here. Thank you very much there, Jay. You're a legend, sir. Guys and gals, if this is your first time here, make sure you subscribe and tick the like so people think that we're not a bunch of, um, what would we call it, right-wing extremists. When they see that it says army on the front of the thumbnail, As we said, there's going to be a more detailed video coming out with terms, with mission statements. Matty Bell, but, uh, Bottle, says uh, he can speak French. Spray the bowl. <laughs> Welcome to the voicemail system. All right, we'll give Lauren a... a um, We'll give Lauren a rest for a second. 
And we'll quickly talk again for a little while. Uh, you don't have to call me tonight, Cass Jordan. You're a witty man. Um, so, military terminology. The reason why you need to know it is because your credibility comes from knowing it, from hearing it. Uh, you never want to be, and, it, and it's happened to me before, where you have a faux pas, where you're sitting there, and I'm sure most military people have gone through this, and for some reason, you just forget what an acronym is, what a meaning is, and you're just, oh, shit. You can't ask that question, all right? You can't ask, oh, what does that mean again? You'll be in the shit, literally. We are supposed to give orders at the speed that you can write it down yourself, but that's not the case. You've got to learn how to use shorthand very quickly. If you don't know how to do appointment titles, sorry, phonetic alphabet, you have to learn that as a must before you go to Kapuka. The reason being, it is something that you'll use all the time and you'll use it all the time after you're out of the military as well because almost every civilian industry uses it that is around phones. Do you know I'm talking about phonetic alphabet? Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, Echo, Foxtrot, etc. And that is normally prefixed with I spell dog, Delta, Oscar, golf. I say again, Delta, Oscar, golf. Numbers, figures, 04234198198. Yeah. I, I, I can talk to you about grids. It's not real important. Things you do need to know, but... Is a four-figure grid means it's accurate to within a kilometer. A six-figure grid is within 100 meters. A eight-figure grid is within 10 meters. And a 10-figure grid is within one meter. And you might be asked to actually give an eight-figure grid. If you had to bury a soldier in a field environment, you might have to give a 10-figure grid. You can't always just use a GPS. You can't. Yeah. Lauren, uh, love the condensed milk. The condensed milk was good. Ethan, struggled with writing in uh, shorthand in Kapuka. It's tough. It is tough. EKO is most important. T-Van, you are spot on, and that is the early knockoff. Remember, remember the knockoff bird? Knockoff! Knockoff! You can... That's an excellent one too, Van. Thank you very much. That makes me want to get my van as well, which I'm going to get. Um, you can, mainly in infantry only, okay, what you can do is you can inspire an early knockoff simply by putting pressure on your call sign. Each day, whether I was a platoon sergeant, whether I was a section commander, or whether it's a re-details commander, etc., then if you can come up with, to me with a good enough reason on why you shouldn't be at work, I'll let you go. <laughs> He'll let you go. It can be one o'clock in the afternoon. You know, if you're going to go outfield, you might be able to say, I've got some administration to do. I've got something I want to get done. Yeah, we'll let you go. Xbox has just come out. You're not going to get anything out of me. Righto, you better go home. Go and play it. Get it out of your system. Mm. Ambushes. Immediate ambush. Deliberate ambush. Yeah. Patrols, we said before. Fighting patrols can consist of a standing patrol. Okay, which means you are forward of a defensive position or you are put into a position where you were told you cannot leave, no matter how dangerous it gets, even if you are getting whacked, even if people, and I don't mean smoking pot, even if you are losing lives, your job is to stay there to give others the chance to get away. And if that means you all go down, then so be it. Did you know that? That's a standing patrol. Hmm. Okay, there's a fighting patrol, which is actually going on a patrol. There's OPs, which are reconnaissance-type patrols, but can also be 
a uh, denial of enemy movement patrol, which means it also has the ability to ramp up quickly and then go down and take on the fight. It's normally above the detection threshold, which means you're there to be visibly seen so the word gets out. So any uh, stakeholders that are against you, whether they be civilian or military or criminal, know where you are and that can shape them to use another area where they can be viewed by a clandestine reconnaissance patrol and then from there they can be interdicted by a fighting patrol. It can be extremely complex. We're a multi-syllable organisation and we I reckon we're the best at it. I do. I reckon we're the best at it. We just need to make sure the right people keep coming and employing and enlisting and it's not watered down by people that are going, well, I just might try that because with COVID or something, this will fill the bills in. But I guarantee you one thing, once you join, you'll actually like it or love it, especially if you're a team player. I had a big conversation today. What do we think about Mr. Buckaroonie? Great covered uh, radio and teletype. Crat. I was, uh, I was crat. I was crat qualified, actually. Yeah, Raytel as well. Raytel is what is the way we communicate right? uh, on radios. Radio and teletype. Um, Raytel. Explain again uh, down there, Mr. Buckarooney. Raytel. What it all stands for? Hmm. Anyway. Evening, Lauren. No milk in mine, thanks. Says SRN, great to have you here. And the mouser is underneath as well. Evening all. We've got a Merry Christmas uh, fist and tree there. Dust off is a Kazavak, that's right. We've got Ethan there. Tasmanian Devils are off soon. Smeak, yep. We were talking about that before, Isaac. Situation, mission, execution, administration, logistics, and command and SIG. And the T before that would be Topo. Okay, Mr. Buckaroonie, that was a SIG thing, mate. Mr. Buckaroonie, you were SIGs, weren't you? Raytel? Everyone uses Raytel, every corps. Yeah, yeah, I was in Krat. I was, remember, I was in Army Reserve Signals. I don't know if you knew that, Mr. Buckaroonie. I was actually qualified Morse code as well uh, from the 130 Signal Squadron, you know, and I was meant to be going over to electronic warfare. But I went, you know what? This guy's sitting inside an enclosed space with no air conditioning for 40 weeks. Did I it? Did I it, it? No, thanks. Infantry. And I never looked back. I'm so glad I made the decision. Um, radio and telephone, mate. As in K-phone. I, I couldn't stand K-phones. You know, those things, you know, the, when you use those in a defensive position... They're a shit fight. Simon Powell, Smeak, Situation Mission Execution. No, it's not equipment, mate. It's execution, mate. What? What are you talking about, Simon? No, all wrong. Situation, Mission, Execution, Administration Logistics, Command and SIG. That's what it is. Uh, what about the six P's? Piss, uh... Prior preparation prevents piss poor performance. Yep. Lauren, here's an army wife acronym. OMO, old man out. You know, if you see that, OMO, the box in the old army homes, that normally means that the gentleman is at Tully or he's outfield at High Range or Shoalwater Bay or Tyndall and it's okay to come on over. Ambush set. Jay Hayes, OMO. Bam, Jason Ross. Hey, buddy. He's over to cut the grass. That's right. The victor. Guys, there are so many military terms, and Bucko will tell you. You know, you need to understand where you're at in the mix. Some of the biggest arguments I've seen is when there's a clash of command, and, and where I really saw this happen really badly was in uh, the Sinai Peninsula, when you've got... Uh, sometimes complex patrols that have got multiple different organizations and different countries involved, different rank structures, people from a 
a logistics background and people from a tactical background where there'd be confusion over tactical commander or a convoy commander and when you explain to them you are not the tactical commander as a convoy commander when you have no active SOPs on what to do or actions on if something occurs or an ability to actually fight back at that said threat. That is why it is easier to say to the bodyguard, to uh, what's his name? Uh, what's his name? Oh, JC. G'day, mate. Good to have you here. JC, you know who it is. Out of the actual movie Bodyguard, Kevin Costner. You know, let the tactical commander, whether that's a sergeant and you're a colonel in transport or whatever it is, you never see someone above the rank of corporal. You never see a sergeant in transport. I don't know what they're doing, eating donuts, drinking coke. You never see them. Um, but you should have an understanding between yourselves. Should anything go to shit in seniority, which is part of command and SIG, which is the last packet of an orders group, seniority doesn't necessarily mean like it does in the police force that I've done two more days than you, so I'm senior to you, so I, I'm basically a commander. Seniority can mean that someone is put into a position of the commander and then the two I see of that, packet commanders, etc. And it can be complex to those that don't know what they're looking at when someone of a lower rank can be in a position of authority over someone with a higher rank. It doesn't just go to the default highest rank that's there. Okay? Um, and, and there used to be some debates on that. Yep. You want to know that the person, if the shit hits the fan, knows what they're doing. It's not just because they've spent a, a long time in a different job that had nothing to do with pulling triggers. Mm. I'm really surprised that Jay Hayes hasn't hit me up for how long it takes me to drink one warm beer. This one's for Buckaroonie. Remember, next Saturday is his big stream. His big stream. I'll tell you right now, Bucko, I reckon what I think should happen is the uh, to do with bringing jobs back to Australia. Let's pick up the acronym MAGA, Make Australia Great Again. Let's do that. Let's bring manufacturing home. Let's start to treasure our farmers. Do you know what else we might need? What do you think on this, JC? JC's a pretty smart man. What do you reckon about Australia gets rid of popular vote? And we take on something like the uh, the U.S. system with the electoral uh, voting system, meaning that if you're from Victoria, you might get five five points. If you're from Sydney, you might get five points, whatever. But if you're from Broken Hill or you're from uh, North Queensland, you've still got a chance to have an equal voice in Australia. Because anyone that doesn't understand how the electoral college system works, I don't believe that our farmers get enough of a say. Yeah? And if they did, some of the billions that get spent in our big cities could go back out to these, not as a loan, but as a this is good for the country. Yep. Yeah? Hey, Manny, how you going, mate? Cheers very much. And that's a beautiful looking cow there. What I'm going to give you is a dance move from the 80s. I'm your Venus, I'm your fire, your desire. Thank you very much for that. Again, dog food. Achilles is going to love it. Thank you very much. And I love the cow there too. Dusty Rhodes, been a while. I'm currently uh, ending week six of training. Dusty Rhodes, it is a Dusty Road for you, mate. T Van loves the MAGA. You know, we could keep it blue. Let's give up. Let's draw a line in the sand and say no, no more sorries for anyone. Now it's time to move forward. Stop blaming the sins of the father on the son, or the great-great-great-grandfather on the son, and let's mend as a country. Let's come together, and let's all be Australian. You know, let's look at the Bradford scheme. Let's grab that water from up north before we need it down south, and let it flow, let it get captured. Let's give it to the farmers. Stop the damming from the great corn, red corn chip that grabs our dams, stops them not caring what happens to the river or the farms down river from that. Daz, 
make Australia great again. We're a goddamn great country. We are. And we're a loving country. And we're an acceptable country. And we love our people. And we defend people that are good people. When people come here and they learn the language and then you hand them a cricket bat and say, be prepared to get over the fence if you hit it over there and that means you're out, okay, then that's how you become an Aussie. Okay? Invite them in, give them a feed, make them feel welcome, hold them accountable, yeah, and they'll have a great time. Going all right, mate. The shoulder's good. The mind is getting better. JC, that's fantastic, and I hope your project is going really well as well. <laughs> Bailey's hat, he's got multiple hands here. There's equity right there. And that's what we need to stop doing. We need to stop giving special treatment to anyone. You know, you earn what's on your plate. No more handouts, because when you give a handout, it's an expectation. And after that, it pisses off those that are working. And before you know it, you've got to split uh, lines within, fault lines within your community. Okay. I've always got a, enough to give some to others. I have. And, and I do that. Okay. But if you have nothing to give financially, then you can give a bit of your time. Whether that means you mow the lawn two or three houses down from yours, each time you mow the front of your property because the council's too slack to do that. Yep. A new uh, cow idea could be a beef burger. <sighs> Love a good burger, Tazzy Devil. Love it. Buckaroony. G'day, Kane. Kane Higgins. He's from North Queensland. Yeah. He's kin of Jay Hayes. <laughs> the Pepsi drinking lad from the WA. Flubber Dubber and friends. Smokey, be whereabouts uh, are you from? And the special category visa between Oz and New Zealand. Happy for that, JC. Let's bring our New Zealand brothers on board and sisters. Let's make them feel welcome. Hmm. Hey, mate, going through the process of joining the Defence Force, your videos have been so effing helpful in getting me ready. And that's what we want them to be, mate. We want it to be trickle. Um, common sense that comes in. That's what we want it to be. We want you to be able to come here and just take it easy and you don't even know why you know something. But it's because, pardon me, Mr. Buckaroony said it. Simon Powell said it. JC said it. Michael Stott, medic, said it. Or Kaz said it. Or Lauren said it from the soldier's spouse's perspective. There's no, uh, what do we call it? There is no uh, need for ego here. Right? This is all about getting you ready. Uh, why is a junior officer Rupert or a subby called a Rupert or a subby? I don't call them either of that, mate. A subby, subaltern, you know, sub lieutenant, you know, because there used to be a rank that was the first and the second lieutenant, and the worst thing they ever did was get rid of it. Because when you're a junior lieutenant, you're lower than a piece of shit shadow. I just made that up. I don't mind that saying. What do you reckon, JC? Lower than a piece of shit's shadow. You know, these people are fledglings. You know, they're great at what they do. But they need to be given time to stand on their skates and be forgiven for making mistakes so that you can build them up to be the best version of them because they're going to be telling you what to do soon enough. Give them the respect. Give them the opportunity. And then when they've got the one pip okay, and that's on their shoulder, then you treat them with kid gloves. You hold them accountable. No one holds them more accountable than the captain and adjutant, you know, the, the two I see are the companies. Cut them a break. Teach them something. Every soldier should be able, a lieutenant should be able to go over to a soldier and go, who are we going to say? Jay Hayes. Jay Hayes, how you going? Teach me something, lad. If you're going to work for me, I want you to teach me something. If you reckon I'm just a bloody officer, make me a bloody good officer. You teach me something. Because by the time JC has taught me something, Lauren's taught me something, JC, Ryan Ward, good to have you here, mate, has taught me something. Faux FIBA, forward odd, forward of the forwarded edge battle area. Also, one of the uh, acronyms used on the shirts for uh, snipers and recon. Simon, uh, Peter Cram, Simon Powell, the lurker. He's always here. Mr. Buckarooney, you know, teach me something. If you went up to every single person and said, teach me something, you're going to accidentally learn a lot. 
Yeah, because they're not going to teach you something useless. They're going to teach you what they think is their best soldiers five. Yep. And if you can't give someone, you know, the best uh, training from something that is given to them as an official, okay, lesson, then what you can do is go, give me a soldiers five. Explain it to me like I'm stupid. No worries. Excellent. Okay, now I know what you're talking about. Use your uh, your jargon so I pick it up. Remember before what we were saying. There's four phases. Okay, there's four phases to conflict. There is the advance, there is the attack, there is the defense, and there is the withdrawal. There's four stages to an attack, and that is the preparatory stage, the attack, the exploitation, and the reorganization. You know, there is so many different things. And how is all commands given? Clap. Have I had it? Clear, loud, as an order, with pauses. Hey, yes, so there you go, mate. Uh, make Australia great again. Again. I love it. Maga. With no R. Guys and gals, never forget we're a great country. And you live in the best times to be alive. Hmm. My dad was in the British Army, was telling me the shit they used to uh, say. Imagine there's some unique slang over here. There absolutely is, mate. There absolutely is. And when I was talking with a, a gaggle of ex-soldiers that had worked with me, um, some from the 2nd Battalion, Royal Australian Regiment, second to none, okay. and also Aaron the Hitman Dixon, Took them for lunch today. Aaron never says no to a free lunch if you're out there. And we had a talk today and we were discussing how good would Australia be if there was national service. Now, that's not calling up because you're saying there's a conflict. What it is, is harnessing people to be a better version of them before they're broken or become selfish or run down or don't have the skills as a human being to defend themselves or wring the neck of life to get the best version of them out of it. If you know what I'm saying. So before people start to make these mistakes, there they are in a uniform. All of a sudden they're fitter than they've ever been. They're part of a team where they're held accountable. They actually have people calling them friend, mate, brother. All of a sudden, the year is almost over. They've achieved things. They've been told they can do their job. They mysteriously start acting like an adult prematurely. And they have people they can call back on. It gets rid of loneliness. It gives people coping mechanisms. It gives people solid critiques and what it feels like to actually fail. Team-based. People go, that's tribalism, that sucks. Well, it's a lot better than what's happening with our world at the moment. Yep. We want you to succeed. One of the most famous females in the Marvel series, worth shitloads of millions, has just lost her job because she's such a bitch. That's sad. Did anyone at any stage go, you're over your skates. Pull your head in if you want to be in part two. Believe me, the money that you have now will not last a lifetime. You'll find a way to spend it. Pull your head in. Hmm. I'm going to ring Lauren again. Let's see what we can do. Hmm. How are we all going? Is everyone still amped up? Does anyone need more? Are we waffling too much? We know we're about to go into the weekend. What are you going to do this weekend? What's Mr. Buckaroonie going to do? Hello. I was, just, I was just thinking um, about what you said about being a bitch. Yeah. And, you know, it really makes me sad, and I've said this to you before, that there's so many young women nowadays who think being a bitch is a virtue. I can't believe it when I see, actually on the back of a car with baby seats in it, someone with stickers like, I'm a boss bitch, or back or off, I'm a bitch. You go, what the hell are you doing? Girl, exactly. Girls are starting to get, there's channels of girls that go out now to yep. deliberately be a Karen to police and to other people and they make a channel about it. Why are they so desperate for attention? You know, it's crazy because that's not even like a female's power doesn't come from being nasty. 
They're meant to be the gentle, the, the gentler sex. Well, that's what I've found is, you know, I don't mind being in a man's world as long as I can do it like a lady. It's a man's world. Yep. So it should be. It's a man's world. Yep. I tell you what, it ain't easy being a bloody man. <laughs> no, not at the moment. It's not. <laughs> yeah. You know, I worry about my young men. We, we face rejection so often and so early in our life that it's not a big deal to us. You go, eh, it's all right. I know well, if a boat good. sinks, I'm fucking dead. <laughs> no. Yeah, it's, it, I, I really think it's actually really awful yeah, because, in my opinion, your white male nowadays is discriminated against and I don't throw that around like a victim card. I think it's a fact. Mm. Yeah, but, but look, at the same time, it doesn't worry me. It pisses yeah, me no. off. It gets on my nerves. You know, the, the the woman, you know, that woman deserves to get her teeth knocked in. That one um, that's made a YouTube uh, viral that it yeah, fills it. bottles of water and um, yes. and what do you call it? Outrageous. That uh, is water outrageous. and what does she put in it? It's bleach. Uh, yeah, she puts in there like water criminal. and bleach to the point it burns the skin. And yeah. goes over to men in trains that are going to work, minding their own business, headphones on, and then yep. just goes in there and just sprays it all over their balls. Yeah. Look, I understand why men sit differently than ladies. You guys have junk there. You ha you know, I mean... Swing low, sweet yeah, chariot. Got, the older you are, the lower they swing too. And you've got business there. You can't squish it, you know. <laughs> it's... It, you know, they should try putting something in their pants and see how they sit. Sure. I um, let's get some uh, let's get some raise a glass here for JC. Uh, I've had a huge night on the whiskey last night. Funeral for his uh, for his brother in law. Oh, it was a great yeah. send off, and he's hurting today. Yeah, yeah. JC, here's to your brother in law, mate, and here to you, Gobba. JC, as you know, mate, none of us get out of this alive. There is no sequel. And yeah, um, exactly. I hope he had a good life. I hope his family had that chance to say, you know, you get to rest now, mate. We love you. You know, what were your last words? You know, what are you going to say? Let's all give him a hug and send him yeah. off. And, and I don't want to hurt you, mate, so I'll leave that one there. Yeah, yeah, thinking of you. And, we appreciate and you being here, mate. Yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, Smokey B. I respect you a lot, Lauren, for standing up for us men. Oh, thanks. I don't really, I don't like to think of it. Well, am I standing up for you? No, I'm just saying that's really just what I think, you know, because I feel like I have a voice where you guys, you can't say anything. You're, like, muzzled. The second you say something, you're accused of being sexist or some other what, victim White term. privilege? Yeah, some other victim terminology, whereas I'm in a position to speak uh, on and, this. You know what? Hey, a little Italian, I love that name. And I guarantee right. one thing to you, Lauren. Yeah. There would be people right now in this chat that we don't know personally that if you knew yep. their lives, you would not think that they have white privilege. You know, you know, and I yeah. know white men that have had goddamn horrible upbringings. Mr. Buckaroonie yeah. knows more than anyone yeah. in this chat exactly. what exactly. it's like it's, to see it's, guys it's, that absolutely yeah. don't have white privilege. Yeah, exactly. And JC would see his fair share before they get there. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. And, and you know, to be honest with you, I've met just as many male victims of domestic violence as I have. It's even harder for them to come forward. You know, a lot of them don't even recognise that they're being abused because of that being a bitch is a virtue thing. So they think that's just a strong woman. That's not a strong woman. That's just a bitch. I'm not, I'm not trying to, to, to laugh at what you're saying, but in the 2nd, 4th Battalion, when I was uh, posted there, there was an, actually a guy who got assaulted by his wife who smashed him repeatedly in the face in the boozer with a fish. Because he said, I'm going out fishing. He went out fishing. He caught a good fish, came back, put it on the bloody, uh, uh, put it on the bar, and then just stayed there drinking. And before he knew it, he was blotto. 
She came in. You said you were going fishing. He's going, yeah, there's me fish over there. She goes, well, you never came home. <clears throat> and just repeatedly bashed him in the face with a fish. Yeah. Now, good luck going to JC and going, yeah. I just got flogged by someone with a fish that I yeah. live with. I understand what JC's saying, men are victims as well, but mainly women. And also I understand that there's a difference in collateral damage. Like your average guy is much bigger than me. So I understand there's a, there's a, he could do it like a pit bull and a poodle. You know, there's a big difference in the damage. But I think it's a dangerous attitude that we're starting to um, think it's respectable for women to be violent, aggressive, it's okay for them to do As far as I'm concerned, what's good for the gander is good for the goose. If it's not okay for a man to be holding all the finances and checking a woman's phone, I don't think women should be doing that either. Nope. You know? So, and yet I know lots of men who, who live under tyranny, really, in their own homes. And yep. if they say something, then they're likely to get and something thrown at them. That's true. That's true. Um, I didn't get hold of my little daughter there, Jay. I'll give her a call again in a couple of seconds. Um, JC, no, nah, not the second first battalion at uh, Burnham, second first RNZIR. Um, I've been there a number of times. I was a platoon sergeant there for a while. Um, no, I was talking about second, fourth battalion. That was the second battalion, Royal Australian Regiment, second to none, when they were actually combined with the fourth battalion, who went later on, then became the second commando regiment. You know, that used to be a battalion. I was in them. That broke up just as, well, I did the, the last Duke of Gloucester Cup with the 2nd, with 4th the battalion. And then 2-4 uh, did the delinking just as the next week or so we got on the planes to go to uh, Rwanda in 1995. Hmm. Matt makes a good point. Yep. He said, you know, we can't really complain about what's it called, man spreading. Oh, God, I think it's just men sitting. Um, because we do put our bags everywhere. Yeah, we love handbags and that. We always put them somewhere. And, and I, I'll tell you, that I never thought about that, but that that absolutely chaps my ass. and they should do something about it, that when you get on a plane, mm -hmm. you get told carry on, one bag. Yeah. You don't get to carry a handbag and you carry on. It should be one or the other. You know, put yeah, your handbag can, yeah. inside your luggage. You should not be allowed to carry both. Exactly. We do it without even thinking. But don't go throw bleach on them. As no, you, no. no. And we wouldn't. We wouldn't. Yeah, that's... We what, actually... That's there is assault. nothing a woman can get called out for in life. Nothing. Well, I don't know about nothing. They what? do get locked what? up. We have women's prisons. Okay, there is. Okay, but from police. But a man in no way goes up to a girl's, no matter what they're doing, being a bad mum. Oh, wait a sec. Lauren, I'll be with you in a sec. Okay. Hola. Hi. Hey, how you doing? Hi. Are people actually acting this? What? Uh, nothing. We're watching the movie. Oh. Can you do me a favour? What? Can you say, hello, bucko? Hello, Bucko. Hello, Lauren. Hello, Lauren. Hello, JC. Hello, JC. And hello to Jay Hayes and Daz. Hello, Jay Hayes and Daz. Do you know Daz drives a Hyundai? <laughs> like, he drives a Hyundai like me. Huh? He drives a Hyundai uh, like me. Hey, Billy Bob. And Billy hello, Bob. Man. <laughs> oh, you're a funny guy. <laughs> hey, guess what? My hand stinks from Achilles. He said my hand stinks from Achilles, but yeah, um, 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 we're gonna we're gonna see you at the theatre tomorrow. I'm gonna come and watch you do your big show. Not the live. Dream. They're not watching me. No, they're not going to. They, they're not allowed to see you. Okay? You said we. No, me and a mama. I'm going to go there with mum tomorrow night to watch you together, okay? You mean I'm the only one that says mummy. All right. Yeah, okay, you are you. correct. You need to get some sleep so you, you remember your lines, okay? Okay, love you. Bye-bye, baby. You're the only person that says it, and I appreciate it. Thank you very much. I love you too. Okay. 
We are Australian. Best thing in the world, team. It is the best thing in the world. I, I, I couldn't get her to say every name, but um, for those, I'll, I'll get a different group every time. Guys, nothing makes you a better man than the protect, protecting a child. Yeah, it's the best. Yeah. <laughs> You've got to get it right, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> I love knowing that so many of you guys and gals out there are going to know what it feels like, that palsy and fatigue that comes with being a parent. Oh, my gosh, yeah. You're just dead walking for a long time, but you still smile and laugh and <laughs> are full of love. <laughs> oh, well, that is... I'm going to let you know something. There's Marcus. Great yeah. to have you here, mate. So cute. Tell her good luck on her show. I will, mate. Yeah. Do, do you know, when I saw your name, Marcus... I get a really warm feeling inside, and, and it's not like a sailor. I'm going to explain mm. something to you so you don't know. We used to have a thing before the internet, you know, before mobile phones, before computers that were called um, pen pals. Yeah. So what was so <laughs> common when you were at school is you got a pen pal. The fact that you got to communicate with someone from a different country was so exotic. Yeah, it was. So amazing. Yep. You know, and I had a pen pal. My first ever pen pal's name was Marcus. Oh. And I used to write letters to him and he was from Germany. I was going to say, where was Marcus from? He was oh. from Germany. Lovely guy. Lovely guy. I wonder guy. where Marcus is now. I don't know. He could be dead. Yep. Yeah, hey, come on. <laughs> Mouser has got five daughters. Yeah, that's You bad, poor son it? of a bitch. I I'm going to send something to you. Yeah. <laughs> I'll get a special shirt made for someone like you, sir. Yeah, five daughters. Well done. If we've got anyone on here that is not a subscriber, subscribe now. Turn into a zombie on the screen. Let's see ya. Yeah, we love we love new subs, and we love it when you jump into the chat and say g'day, even if you, in fact, especially if you've been lurking for a long time. So hello to all the lurkers out there. Yeah, we love you. You know, and the, the phone calls. And the communications I get with people that go, dude, I watch every one, but I've never written a comment. Yeah, that's awesome, dude. Oh, 32 to three years. Wow. What? <laughs> T Van just subscribed. Van Halen. You know, I'm buying a van. It's costing me $82,000 so that I can go up to everyone with a Ranger, everyone with a Wild Track and Ammo Rock. You know, and go <clears throat> with me handbrake and go, guess what? I'm set up. <laughs> and, and I'm hoping with Mr. Buckaroonie that I'll be in convoy with him watching as he takes that lonely three minutes to set his stuff up. Mr. Uh, P has fallen off the perch. He loves his sleep, the big fella. Yeah, he's got, actually gone to watch Vera, which is a lady detective show that he really loves to watch. It's actually a pretty good show. Old Maybe bastard. Showing his age. After his Finergan and going to bed. Mr. P's a lot older than us, but I tell you, yeah, he's a lovely yeah. bloke and he is, yeah. mate, he is still sharp. Oh, yeah. He's, <laughs> he's really sharp and he's not afraid to speak his mind either. Um, Mouser has twins who are three, Charlie and Matilda. What beautiful names. Yeah. Willy Wonka and Matilda. Oh, Love it. No, Charlie was not Willy Wonka. Hmm. Mr. Buckaroonie, honestly, mate, how lucky are we that we chose to engage in starting channels and watching as the subscribers slowly crept up to two and then it continued yeah. to where they are now. And, I, and, and I'm telling you now, this is this is no bullshit. Some of you guys and gals absolutely keep us going forward. I could not even consider yeah. ever giving up YouTube when I see all the the great family people and the, and those that are following the line of departure, you know, crossing over that to become the best versions of himself. Yeah. Buckaroonie's channel and my channel, our yeah. channel, Lawrence. Now, it is going to make you a better version of you for the simple reason you have a conversation. This is our campfire. Yep. 
we come yeah. here and we talk and we don't tell anyone to go away. Yeah. No. We, mm. we sometimes tell them to go to someone else's campfire. Sometimes. But that, that's only if they misbehave. Dog yeah, named Digger, Mouse. I bet oh. that's your best buddy. I bet he, he just hears you as you look. Oh, I love German Shepherds, but I'm not manly enough to have one. <laughs> I've, I was just cleaning a Cavoodle's asshole with my fingers. Okay. Only a few hours away. Well, you've got a German Shepherd going, Oi, killer. Yeah. Go get your own food. <laughs> there you are with your Cavoodle. <laughs> That's right, Mr. Buckaroony, Brother Channels. Yeah. yeah, and it's good. I really love um, Australian YouTubers who keep it real. That's yeah. what I love. You know, and you both have really great communities. You've both facilitated a really terrific, genuine Aussie presence. You're saying that because you're in both. Yeah, no, actually, you know, <laughs> I go to lots of Australian YouTubers' channels. I was in a stream the other day of a, a small Aussie YouTube channel that I, I have been hanging around. Who is lately. it? They're called Night Watchers Paranormal. They're just two blokes and they do like paranormal stuff and that. But I like them because they're genuine. They don't just make stuff up. If nothing happens, nothing happens. But I, I really like them because they're only a small channel. They're really Aussie. They're just very, very genuine. They'd be happy to collab with you ever, if you want to. Absolutely. And, and they talk to people in their in their stream as well, you know. So they might only get 10 people in on watching the stream, but they're communicating with all of them and they're really great great people so i go to a lot of aussie youtubers yep. and um i just happen to hang out <laughs> with yours and buckaroonies the most um but you you have really great communities and i've really enjoyed especially yours kaz because i've been there for a long long time you know watching it grow and being a part of it it's awesome it's an orange cow yeah. wait two seconds dave follow the sapper okay you talk about the royal australian regiment what about the far north queensland regiment uh pilbara regiment uh, they do heaps. The reason why I talk about the Royal Australian Regiment is because they're regular army, because that's their job, 24 hours a day. And it's because that's what I was part of. You know, I don't talk normally about units that I wasn't part of, because I actually don't understand the, the law, L-O-R-E, what it was like to actually be there. That's that's all. If you want to talk about that, then ask a question about it, and that's what we'll talk about. Um, Jordan D, thanks Kaz and Lauren. No worries. Wouldn't it be great if Lauren was actually sitting here beside us? We had a third person with the stream pad that had the cameras, and I'm buying a second camera tomorrow, so when I make other angles, um, what do I use? When I not uh, using uh, the webcam that I'm using there, which is Logitech, one of the best cameras when it's working properly and autofocus is the G7X. This is the one. I'm buying the three tomorrow. It's not that much better than this. But what it's going to do is allow me when I make videos to have multiple angles so that when I do edits, uh, it keeps it moving for those different angles. So I'm not looking like a weirdo gun, you know, like a freaking sprinkler or a dance floor, floor <laughs> movement from the 80s. Jordan D, can I buy a chili pizza for my dog with that food? No, don't give him a chili pizza. <laughs> washing his butt again. <laughs> Dave, I hope I hope Dave wasn't having a dummy spit there because he asked a question while we we're having a conversation and he's got yeah. down the bottom, okay, bye. No, yeah. it might just be okay, bye, because, you know... Whatever. Dave, if you're there, ask us a question. Let's talk about it. Yeah, happy to. Yeah. We've actually talked about it before, I think. Mm. Guys, as you know, I don't claim to be an expert in anything that you do. I can learn from every one of you in what you do in your life, and then try to incorporate that into my man wisdom by being nearly 50 years old, not quite in my military career. You know, Jordo, what do you do, mate? What do you, what do you do? What makes you you? What do you do for a crust, if you don't mind us asking? Pro basketballer? Jordan, do you get it? Yeah, I get it. Mr. Buckaroonie just got his fifth gong the other day, Kaz, the National Medal for Police and Co Corrections. That's right. Mr. Buckaroonie got an award, okay, for his outstanding performance and service to Australia. Yeah, congratulations. So this is not a participation award. This is something he's earned from years of dedication. You know, the, the, the coal face of Australia 
in military, police, and the, and the, the correction uh, industry, and still managed to have a YouTube channel, and the last bit of energy he has left, he gives back to you guys. That's fantastic. Let's hopefully we see a spike in Mr. Buckaroonie's um, uh, subscriber list as, as we make him ours. If you're in ours, you can also subscribe to his. I do, and I love it. And I do for Lauren. And and you can go around in a circle. That's great. Replace yep. replace the project. Yep. Mr. Buckaroonie reckons no one knows what I look like. You know what I look like, Kaz. Yeah, I know what I know what Lauren looks like. I've put photos of Lauren up before where she's got the tattoo gun. There's yeah. there's videos of Lauren there, you know, doing her speed painting. It's actually oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, you know, I put my face up before, but I'm a bit like Ricky Bobby from that race car movie. I don't know what to do with my hands. I'll just be really awkward, I imagine, on a stream. <laughs> that just put a beer in it. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't drink beer. Okay. Once. Okay, so Buckaroonie was saying that, uh, oh, the dislike guy is here, Tasmanian Devil, that's okay. Never misses a stream. If you, if you never get a thumbs down, then you're not over the target. You're not discussing things that need to be discussed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If you're not He's receiving fine. flack as an Air Force <laughs> fighter bomber, then chances are there's no target worth dropping on. Um, so the, the, the medal goes on his left. He wears his medals on the left. Yeah. That was the most disgusting thing I've ever seen in my military career. <laughs> Never seen that it. is victim think. mentality. You know, <laughs> can, it, yeah. can you please talk about that one for a second, Lauren? Me? Well, I've actually never seen the video, but to be honest with you, I think a lot of it's fake outrage. I, I do wonder how often that actually happens. I bet it's not a real, really huge problem that people come up and <laughs> suggest they're wearing their dad's or husband's. Well, dad's. guess what? Guess what? What? I have had personal experience with this, mm -hmm. where Bucko will be with you in two seconds. I was, I was at the uh, the Honeysuckle Hotel down in Newcastle on Anzac Day, which is Kaz's birthday, 25th of April. Bam! Right there. Off, oh, bam! And I went in there, obeying uh, the laws of the land, so to speak, being respectful to all. And there was a lady there. She was as pretty as a button. But her attitude was fucking shit. You know, she was just sitting there like a mannequin. You know? Yeah, right. And I could tell the way she was looking at me that she knew me, but I didn't know who she was. And she just looks at me, and there was this beta, pofter looking male who was standing there. You know, I, I should have hit him in the face with a pasty, something embarrassing. And he's standing there with a couple of medals on. You know, I think he was Air Force, I don't know. And um, he's just looking at me with this tight lip that doesn't scare anyone. You know, and she goes, you're Kaz from the trenches with Kaz, aren't you? And I went, yeah, that's me. And I'd just got out of the army. And I'd only had the channel going for probably about six months, a year. And uh, she goes, you, you, you laughed, you know, about the, I wear my medals on the left song. I went, how do you yeah. know that? She yeah, got, and, and she was because oh, because I saw you in comments, and I went, oh, I think it was a disgrace. I think it's stupid. And she goes, well, people have accused me before of wearing me dad's fucking medals, blah blah blah. Okay. I earned these medals, and I went, you know what? I've had people ask me. Yeah, exactly. And and just and why why be upset about it? Why? why your, well, your medals should it? not define you your medals should be important to your children it makes you wonder why are you wearing them then so that civilian population will worship you that's not the point it's crazy you know yeah. the reason why you know this is one you may not know i don't know if you knew this bucko when you when you see a hearse coming past where someone has died a soldier veteran whatever yep. in a hearse and you get your hand and you put it across your chest all the time that is not meant to be putting your hand on your heart, so to speak. Mm. What that is um, is meant to be is for military members to put their hand over their own medals. And that is a symbol of saying, 
my honour is not in question today. This is about yes. you. So yes. you hide your accolades. If it yes. was a VC, gallantry, yes. whatever yes. it is, and for that day, Mr. Buckaroonie is the most important yes. person. Yes. Because if a soldier dies in battle and he has his service medal on because he died on the first day of operations yes. and there is a general present at his funeral, the general has no rank at that funeral. He is just a man who has come to respect the falling of a warrior. Yeah. So yes. you put your hand, but people don't realise that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks for explaining that. Yeah. Because I didn't know that either. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. It my good. eyes are stuffed. TVN is saying, is that, I can't say, how many gongs are here? My eyes, mate, might as well be cactus there needles. There are gongs here. That's fine, man. Yeah, that's it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Here. I once got a best nana in the world mug, though. Does that count? A, a what? A best nana in the world mug. Well, you know what? That doesn't intimidate me. Do you know why? Why? Because I don't compete with nans. But you, you know what? Win. You won't win. I'm the best dad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> best dad ever. Yeah, exactly. You know, all dads should come together and fight. You know, for their for their children's uh, respect. Yeah, and all the nans should come together and tell these young women to pull their heads in. Or tell them to get in line and give Kaz a kiss. <laughs> Lest we you forget heard, Kane Higgins. You heard, ladies. Yep. I saw a lady on an ad today, and I tell you, the, the primal fires relit themselves. Did they? Yeah. <laughs> You ready for that Tinder profile that everyone was going to make you? Who's going to be the architect of that? Or worse, Jordo. Did you hear about that? People, you know, I'd be very careful about Fugly. He will start it up. It'll be a series of memes. He will. He will. <laughs> oh, you know, I sort of secretly hope he does. Yeah, I don't know about Tinder and that, like Jordan said, free herpes. I don't know about all this hookup culture, to be honest. I'm a little bit old-fashioned like yeah, that. But this is the thing that you don't understand, Lauren. Yeah. Tinder is fantastic for women. It's shit for men. Yeah, I don't I'll, ex I'll explain best, something more. Yeah. If you're a lady, you are the architect of who you are. Yep. And all you need to do is go on there and go, there's the top 50 guys. I guarantee there is somebody in that top 50 guys, knowing you, that would be a keeper probably for the rest of your life. Absolutely. Yep. You know, when a guy goes on something like that and I'm not on it, mm. a girl won't even see your profile. Yeah, right. You, yeah, won't, you won't even get seen because there will be 20,000 guys. Yeah. When a girl comes on, within a day, she already has lined out and dug and gone, that's the one. I know some girls that are very unsuccessful on Tinder, and that is because they rinse and repeat. They go out, they give up the treasure real early and wonder why the guy doesn't come back. See, that's what I thought Tinder was for. I Tinder is meant to be like that, the, but apparently it's morphed into one, yeah. of the uh, one of the other ones, and Bumble or something is supposed to be where girls actually make yeah, the I'm first move on guys. Up that but i'm just not i'm not i'm not going to do that because i'm you know i'm totally awkward i'm a little bit autistic and i tried mm. e-harmony once and it was just too overwhelming like i just you know you no know bloke that. has no man has ever said that i was so overwhelmed by matches that i actually said no and got rid of it yeah it was it was really overwhelming for me and also because i you know i don't know i'm not really I'm not sort of into like one night stands or things like that. So it's not really my sort of thing. And also I've been out of the dating game for a long, long time. So I don't, I just didn't, I think I'd be just so awkward. It would be embarrassing if I wore a GoPro on a date, you guys would be cringing. Wouldn't that be funny? And if your date turned up with a GoPro on their head and, yeah. you, still, and you still said, I think we've got, I think this is working well. Perfect match. <laughs> <laughs> They've yeah. got their live stream there and you guys could watch mine on live stream. <laughs> but I, I, I've got to tell you, when you when you go to when you go to the schools, for example, mm -hmm. 
it's almost what all. What are the dates and schools for? That sounded rough. No, but it's all nearly all single mums with these kids. Well, You're going, yeah. How that? What? What has happened to society? Yeah. You know, it's 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 out of control. All you've got to do is meet halfway, and a relationship should be good to go. Yeah, but you need the other person to meet halfway too. You but know, that shouldn't be hard. But I'm a single mum at the moment too. I'd like to think it's not entirely. Yeah, but my you have fault. more love in your house <laughs> than almost all people. Maybe, maybe as much as Mouser. Yeah, I get. Yeah, it's true. I do. I do have a lot of love. I don't feel like I'm missing anything. I'm not best to hook up with someone for the sake of hooking up with them. I'm never lonely. Well, and okay. In case you don't know, how the hell are you meant to hook up when you've got a sniper? From the second battalion, Royal Australian <laughs> Regiment, second to none, that lives out the back of your house. That actually was a bit of a problem with some of the gentlemen I tried to meet. They kind of were a bit uncomfortable with that situation. But like I said, it's you know, he's my best friend. He's not going anywhere. He's, he's a legend. Right. I love the yeah. guy. <laughs> he's all right. Don't worry about him. Team, we've just caught. We've just caught a lurker. Can we get some thumbs up? So M M Nags. Uh, realizes that he's been sprung. It's his first time poster. He's been here for a long time. Let's get some thumbs up for MM Nags, please, in oh, the chat yeah, welcome. to welcome the legend on board. Yeah, welcome. Yeah, you know, there is nothing better than a lurker because they make you earn that thumbs up. <laughs> they, yeah, exactly. you know, you, you, they're like a fish on the end of a line that yeah. you just go and please. Exactly. Yeah. I was a lurker before I said hello. I'd been to a few a few videos and that before I said g'day. When you get to heaven, what do you think you'll say? G'day. I'll say g'day. Yeah. Jeez, if you said that now, there'd be people offended, wouldn't there? Probably Usually. is already. We've got thumbs down guys. Always yeah. seems to be the misguided fan, though. Never misses a stream. Hey. Uh, Mr. Buckaroony says, Kaz, just tell the ladies that it might be small, but it goes like a soul machine. I don't have that problem, Mr. Bucko. For those that don't know, I've been informed by FHM Magazine when they were allowed to do it by ladies' choice that everything downstairs is the perfect. Everything. It's the one bit of me that is me crown and glory. <laughs> um, what were we going to say? Before I, I just embarrass myself. <laughs> um, yeah, you've had two beers and the party's getting rough. Uh, uh, it's getting started around here. Um, I forget what I was going to say. Ah, here's, here's one with absolutely, absolutely no judgment in it whatsoever. And okay. understanding that no one here actually really knows each other that much. Mm. Two seconds. Don't you dare go anywhere. I can see 45 current viewers. I want to see 45 when I get back. I'm going to be like 20 seconds. And when I get back, I'm going to show you something that you'll never see again in your life. And it's not part of Kaz. Two seconds. That's enough out of you, bucko. That's why I could never have a stream of my own. I never know what to say. I'm coming. <laughs> Give me a second. Yeah, they're still here. <laughs> We're waiting. Forty-five, good. We're still there. <laughs> Everyone was waiting. Oh, what's this I'm wearing? Could that be Rafa? I hope it fits. This is this is uh this is not oh, what I'm talking no. about. This is a shirt that just come from Bucko. Oh, it's so great. Yeah, it's nice. I love but, it. I love Rafa there. It's awesome. He is. He's got his puppy there. But this is not what it was about. This is not what it was about. Oh, okay. Guys and gals, you have to stand for something. Yep, you have to stand for something. We all believe in family. We all believe in country, friends, sacrifice. 
the Anzacs, leadership, brotherhood, love, hopefully, animals, all that sort of stuff. Do we have anyone here that's religious? I am. Oh, I'm well, religious. I, I am too. I just think I'm spiritual more than religious. Yeah, me too. Josh, Josh Bourne's. He just subscribed. Can we get some thumbs up for Josh? Welcome, Josh. He might have been a Buckaroonie stream, uh, uh, fan, and he's just seen that I'm representing Bucko, and you know we I've stolen one off you, Bucko. We've got lots of folks who are in both streams, and it's really great to see. Yeah, it is. In the Venn diagram of both your channels, there's a crossover point. And please, when you subscribe to the channel. Write something down, a comment, so we can see a little bit about you, mate. Yeah, we do. We really do love to, to learn who you are, and maybe you're like Mouser and hiding five daughters or something. You know? Could be shit. It is not a Pepsi shirt, Simon. You didn't tell me the top button was undone up. I nearly bloody tourniqueted me neck there, Buckaroonie. <laughs> yeah. It looks good. It's great. I love it's a lovely. Shirt. It's a lovely one RAR colour, he's probably thinking. Yeah. <laughs> Flubba dubba. And uh, Code Blue Syndicate, that's a good name. Well, I don't think we've got your subscriber yet. If you haven't subscribed there, Code Blue, can we uh, can we see you subscribe to see your name and see you turn into a zombie on the screen? On the screen? Um, I've got something in my right hand here at the moment. It's man-made. Mm -hmm. Not by my mum. I think I know what it is. And I'm about to show you something because this is a one-of-a-kind. What I've got in my hand is a religious artifact, you know, and in your life, the things that you should have that you'd save in case of a fire, artifacts. You know, this is one that I love, and I got it for my daughter before she was born. I didn't know she was going to be born, but I got this for me first born, should I ever find someone that stayed long enough to give me one. Bam. That is a crucifix that I got from Jerusalem and Israel, and now all I need to go and do is get it blessed and then put that in the room. Now, that might not seem like a big deal to people that aren't religious. But I spirituality... I of religious icons. I love it. Well, it was one of the things that well, Julius Caesar and the Romans, the reason why they had such a drama with Christians was because they said it's the only God. And they went, hey, 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 hey. Don't tell other people that they're God doesn't matter. Spirituality, a belief, something that can be there in the absence of hope yeah. or reinforcements turning up is a very important thing. Yeah, exactly. Allow yeah. everybody their own beliefs. Don't ram your atheism down no. people's throats because you don't want them to ram or, your or religion. religion down yours. Yeah, yeah, or exactly. religion. Anything, yeah. Allow other people to have their own beliefs. Do you know some of the nicest people I've met in my goddamn life? Some of the yeah. nicest people I've ever met. Do you know who they were? Who? Sikhs? I've met some lovely Sikhs. I was going to say Islamic people. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's true as well. Islamic people, they will give you the shirt off their back. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you know, their, their children are lovely. Yeah, one know? of my favourite um, playgroup mum friends from when my children were little was Islamic. I accidentally fed her kids ham sandwiches once. I was so sorry. I thought I was going to cry, but she was so nice about it because hmm. it was an accident. You know? <laughs> I didn't even think I just made little sandwiches and put them out. They did love them, though, by the way. We're going to change subject for a second. Dean Irwin, mm -hmm. do you know how much it costs... For a night in Hanoi, in a hotel, in a three-room hotel with air conditioning and better Wi-Fi than Australia? Do you know? I found out today. While you're thinking and pondering on that, do we remember how long an oyster is pregnant for? Oh, you told me, but I can't remember. 16 hours. So if you're an oyster and you go out in the piss... You can meet a girl you've never touched. <laughs> and by the time you wake up, had some salt water in your guts, she tells you you've got a million kids and now <laughs> she want, and now she wants the maintenance. You'd, yeah. you'd be screwed. <laughs> okay. So we've got Dean Irwin going, going on, guys. Right. Oh, as in like, what's going on? I thought he was saying like, you, is it going on with shit? So yeah. Dean Irwin, 
16 days. No, Jay, 16 hours. Yeah, that's right. So I'm going to Vietnam. Nam, as they call it, those that have been there before. And I want to go there, go across the border, come back so I can do my second tour of Nam, make me a veteran, and then get spat on when I come home. Would you eat a bag of insects? If they've no. got insects for so oh, why not? Not even for us? No. Oh, maybe. What if you lose a game of XCOM to me? If D- oh, that? there we go. If Dee Nerwin said to me, you know, I am the private soldier as a member and I want to see you eat those bugs, maybe I would. I don't dance <laughs> to it. amuse people, but what I do is have a good time. Yeah, exactly. You know? And we'd really like to see you eat a bag of grasshoppers well that sounds pretty damn cruel you know <laughs> you know so do you know when the cost of pack of the smiths no look look it up team give up buckos lawrence and kaz's channel tomorrow and go and check out i, I need to get the link for you and so i'll put it in the comments next time we stream yeah, because i absolutely understand that there is some amazing channels and it should be my job to make a video of the top best channels that you should go for so you don't have to do it you just turn up and go casio goddamn spot on and now we'll never see you again because you gave us 10 better channels than yourself yeah I know. <laughs> one of the channels that i went to is this fella he's he's photogenic he's funny as hell he's got energy he's young he's well versed and there's no wasted room in his in his videos they're really really well done all self-taught through yep. Skillshare, which is sponsored by Son of a Bitch. I wonder how much they pay him. Good. But um, Skillshare's good. He goes to Hanoi for the, for 100 bucks and can't spend 100 bucks in a day. You know, his, his accommodation, if he wanted the best, was $70. Wow. $70 for a three-bedroom penthouse. Live like a king. Live like a king or a queen. Let's not be yep. sexist. Yeah, sorry, that was very sexist of me. I apologise. But what I'm looking at doing, I need to go to America and I need to go to Vietnam. They're two countries I definitely need to go to. America yeah, to see to Ed B. For a while. Sorry? You've been meaning to go to both for a while now. Well, I've sort of got hijacked from the COVID, as they yeah. say in France. Yeah, didn't we all? But um, I really would love to go to America to go to the Walter Reed Hospital and go and see the veterans that are yeah, wounded over there yeah, um, and go and ask if they'd be willing to be part of our channel because I know that they'd put a tear in Bucca Rooney's eyes to uh, talk to the soldiers so yeah. you just could actually uh, let them feel like they're reaching out as part of a channel. I'd go back day yeah, after be- day if they yeah. wanted me to. Yeah, that'd be awesome. So they could see their own face, feel like they've got out of the place, uh, and we'd make a donation, definitely. Uh, but the other one is I'd love to go to Hanoi, and I'd love to do all sorts of stupid little novelties where we grab a guy, pay him to be our guide, absolutely overpay him, so he's confused at what we try to do for his family. You know, But we want you guys to really love it. Yeah, Smokey B, Vietnam Streams, you know... We call it Nam streams, all right, mate? Sounds better. Nam. Yeah, sounds better. <laughs> but I tell you something. I love people more as I get older. I yeah, really I, do. I'm, I'm kind of I, – I go both ways, right? I love people more, but I also don't suffer fools easily as I get older. Mm. So I'm kind of like – I really appreciate people who, you know, have half a brain and can have a, a, a conversation, you know, uh, but if, if they're a fool, I really have very little patience. I don't want to waste my life. You don't want to waste your life? No. You know, talking to people who can't be reasoned with or can't communicate effectively. I've, I've just been put in a zone. Yep. Wait two seconds. Rosie is going to infantry. Well done, mate. 16th yep. of February. Kapuka, see you there. We're putting out the video soon to call you in. Understand at the moment, people all across Kapuka, Singleton, other training environments are going on holidays at the moment with stupid haircuts, half qualified. So they're getting their leave. Someone said to me, you lied. You said eight weeks leave. And I went, if you're fully qualified, if you've worked your days up, eight weeks is true. Um, 
They weren't really upset though, were they? I don't know. Uh, it wasn't. It wasn't here tonight. Someone yeah, just. Someone just said something. And I, I felt my heart move. There we go, well, Smokey B. Can you read that out for me, please, Lauren? Smokey B said, "I want to go to America just so I can join in on the Trump rallies." I know Mr. Buck Rooney is not necessarily a fan. I'm, I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure. But I've got to tell you, we're diverse. In the absence of leadership that I see in Australia, and by doing more than four thousand hours investigative. Uh, journalism, or we'll call it, Citizen. over the last four and a half years, and also yep. getting it right that he'd win in 2016, and doing all the the back end investigations, and also yep. dismissing some of the stupid things he said. Understanding I've said worse things. Yeah. Just Flat. looking at the policy alone, and looking at the energy and the love and the respect and the hope <coughs> given back to them. Oh, it'd be a heck of an experience. When I, well, when I watch those rallies, I get tears in my eyes and nothing else can do that to me. So, Smokey B. It'd be a great experience for sure. I would wait three days in a line. Yeah. Yep, yeah. eating a bag of grasshoppers. Maybe. Maybe. In fact, if you went to America, there's heaps of great food you'd have to try. That's right, Van. And you know what? He's going to win. I hope. Flat. I hope. You know it, what? Not just for him. But for America, yeah. we've, we've got Stay a lot of friends in America. <laughs> Sorry? Stay in the flags. Stay in the flags. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Team America. Guys and gals, two beers. Pissed off me chops. No, I'm not. Make sure you put a, uh, a like in if you can. If you haven't, subscribe. And understand that the jelly sandwich that you may not like might be one that I love. But there might be things that you love that I don't. Yeah, for sure. What we are here for is an Australian flavour to a world opinion. Yeah. At the end of the day, the biggest thing that we can have is a voice. Without a voice, without a vote, we are nothing. And if what is happening in the USA continues to happen, then what we may see is the death or the dying of the Second Roman Empire, so to speak. And that's not what anyone should want to see. You know? Yeah, let's just, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. <clears throat> anyway. Yes. It's a, it's a horrible thing to say, but if you're a prawn, don't go to school. That's where we find you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Bucko, do you know what I'm doing tomorrow? I don't know what your cooking's like, mate. I don't know what your cooking's it's like. Off your, no, I'm not talking about his grills and stuff. I'm oh, talking yeah. about his indoor cooking. His finesse I've with seafood, etc. Yeah. But I'm going to do an experiment tomorrow. I'm what going to buy a kilo of green prawns, variants, and I'm going to cook four different versions mm. of the crustacean. Are we going to get your recipe for your garlic sauce? Once, oh, uh, there, there may be that garlic sauce that I've already done before and I've basically perfected on the first hit out of the park. But tomorrow I'm, I'm trying to perfect a way of cooking the crustacean that is good enough for my father to have his Christmas present presented to him. Mm. Oh, delicious. Yeah. We always have prawns at Christmas too. They're, they're the best. The, yeah, never, the, the prawns awesome. I get, I, I get up yeah. at four o'clock in the morning to show that there is a pilgrimage to get said prawn Yep. Uh, in Newcastle. Should be applying for the army in around three days. Just rounding my, uh, just rounding off my questions and answers and knowledge in general. Just, just remember, Moto, that there is nothing you can do about uh, uh, aptitude tests. You can learn how to do a test better, but you don't actually get smarter at it. You know, so just go and have a good time. Go and see where you're at, and you might blow yourself out of the water with the success you have in front. Um, yep. Let's have two more questions before we go. Yeah, Mr. Buck, or anything, you should film your um, prawn <clears throat> pilgrimage. I think you should too. That that wouldn't be a bad one. You know? Yeah, I actually really love Mr. Buck and his cooking videos. Uh, wait a sec, Smokey B. New Zealand doesn't let us leave the country unless it 
is Australia. Smokey B, <coughs> you've got some real political problems over there, mate. Um, but I think, they'll, I think they will be rectified, mate. Time, time tends to bring the pendulum back. You know, you know that you're one of the most loved countries on earth. There is people that travel from around the world and bypass Australia to go straight to New Zealand. Yep, it's a lovely country. I'm, I'm, I am very partisan of the South Island, not the North Island. Um, down to Bluff, I've got a rock from Bluff, you know, with the southernmost point. You know, um, had some awesome times around with, uh, let's just say, uh, my trips there. I'm not going to give myself away. I had crabs once. Mr. Buckaroonie. Were they blue swimmers or muddies? Jordan <laughs> B, you're going to be the last question for tonight there before you slam dunk this one. You can definitely study for the aptitude tests. There are resources online worth paying for if you need tutoring. It's true, Jordan, but again, it only makes you better at passing aptitude tests. It doesn't improve your IQ. Your IQ, you can't actually improve. Okay, what happens is with your IQ, uh, your problem solving capabilities, whatever, it actually degrades as you get older, as you lose fitness, as you BMI, etc. you can actually go downhill. And that's why you see people that are extended age that don't even have the confidence to cross the road anymore because it meets their physical lack of ability and acumen to be able to move their body. That's why it's so important to be on this sort of stuff, to test the mind, to watch different YouTube channels, to stay activated, right? even computer games, but also keep your body moving. I've got to go and do 100 push-ups now because I haven't done them yet today. Okay. The girls around the world, Mrs. Marvel, demands it of me, and I'll oblige. <laughs> do you know what? I've got to say... You don't often have more than one beer on stream, but I think I can hear it. <laughs> I tell you what, if I had one more, that'd say that's enough mid-strength beers for you, son. We get to be drunk, Kaz, because you know what drunk Lauren's like. She's awful. She's totally different to me. <laughs> <laughs> that's enough mid-strength beer for you. <laughs> All right, guys and gals, very much yeah. agreed, Kaz. Delegate, great to have you here. Make sure you press the like. Subscribe if you haven't. Become a zombie. Yeah, please do. We love it. And remember, life yeah. can get a hell of a lot worse. Yeah, exactly. And remember, we've got a good community. We're here for you in the good times and the bad times. You know, so don't mm. don't don't feel shy about telling us what's going on in your life. You know. And there is literally people that whinged less in Stalingrad than people that do in our civilized society now. Go figure. Yeah, no time for whinging. No time for whinging. That's a good song, isn't it? That would be a good song. Yep. All right, good night, everybody. See you later. And remember, you never want to feel as low as a turd shadow. Yeah. See you later.